Okay, ahora sí, live. Now we just wait for everyone to join. And, well, for now, let's see here. Hasta le ganamos porque decía la, yo dije a las dos, pero, pero inicié mm. temprano. Ha, ha. <coughs> so now we wait. Bueno, mientras tanto, te voy a decir. Uh, creo que algo me estoy olvidando. Pero aparte de esto. Um, yeah. Igual, buenas. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, we're going to wait for everyone to join, as usual. Uh, espera que lleguen todos. Igual, um, we have my dad here again today. Uh -huh. Well, so you can come closer. Good afternoon, guys. <laughs> Aquí siempre decimos buenas también. Buenas Entonces, tardes. Estamos acostumbrados al, al buenas porque es más sencillo y más, eh, más rápido. Incluso... Informal, eh, luce informal también, o sea, buenas. Claro. A Don Shader le gusta bastante en que aquí todo el mundo te saluda si te dice buenas. Mm. Y sí, es algo... Educación. Educación se llama. Es educación. Ah. Y eso es algo que parece que, se, que en Estados Unidos casi ya no se ve. Mm. No sé si, si sea nomás allá o si en otras partes también, pero... But anyways, a uh, lot of conversation here just talking about how it's a good education here to say the whole buenas or buenas tardes, buenos días, no just... But um, yeah, if you're here, uh, good afternoon to you, buenas. And uh, we have a few things to talk about uh, today. Of course, as usual, we will be answering questions. Uh, the main focus, as you could tell by the title of this live stream, is uh, talking about the state of emergency um, that was declared, which ironically was declared at the same time as uh, I was recording the video that I recently made about um, accepting Ecuador's reality. I was recording it, and after recording it, I went straight into quick edits, trying to make it really polished so I could upload it, and then mulling over uploading it or not. So um, I didn't even notice what was going on in the news. I was just concerned about uh, what could happen. Um, but yeah, then after that, uh, I found out there was the whole state of emergency. Uh, the curfew and all that stuff, but um, that's the situation. Uh, hello, buenas, uh, Mary, Mary Christopher. Um, emergency for what? Uh, the state of emergency is basically, like it says there, a curfew. Uh, businesses uh, and things can only be open until around, I think, 10. Hasta las 10 se puede mantener abierto. Until 10. Uh, and then the military and the police, they start kicking you off the streets. They start uh, making you go home. Um, no, no recuerdo si solo te mandan a la casa o si te encuentran afuera, te mandan a... Te detienen y tienes una multa de un salario básico. Yeah, so basically if you're, if you're out on the street while uh, after the curfew, uh, the police takes you into custody and they fine you a uh, minimum wage penalty. They, uh, you get fined for that. Uh, hello, Cynthia. Uh, Placido, buenas. Buenas. <laughs> um, let us know if you can hear us both well because we have the microphones. Uh, Mary Christopher, why is there a state of emergency? Uh, Daniel, buenas. Uh, ¿Por qué hay el estado de excepción? <clears throat> Por seguridad. Safety reasons, safety concerns. This seems, this is part of the conversation we want to have here today where um, it seems like every time there's a crisis, Recently, there was the assassination of the mayor of Manta, which I talked about on... I mean, uh, Natalia, our amigos. No. Uh, recently, there was the assassination attempt um, in... Buenas, Natalia, hello. Hola, Natalia, Nati. <laughs> recently, there was the assassination attempt... Uh, the, the assassination of the mayor of Manta. I talked about it in my recent video, Accepting the Reality of Ecuador. Uh, I talked a little bit about that, why I think that happened, why I think there's really nothing that can be done um, in regards to that. But every time there is a situation, the solution of the president, uh, at least in this term, has been to, to just declare a state of emergency and say, oh, state of emergency, everything is good now. And 
We've had 16. Han sido 16. Yo vi en investigaciones sí, en no, 16. Son, pero son 11, 11 en total. Son más completos. Well, the more complete ones are 11 uh, state of emergencies and nothing has happened. There's been 11 states of emergency, 16 indirectly, not the big ones, but in total, but 11. And the situation stays the same. And actually, if you look at the level, like we have uh, the, the assassination of citizens, like I guess you could say someone who isn't in a position of power. And now we have the assassination of a mayor who was a very important figure um, who was killed. And not just him, a soccer player as well. So it's understandable that there's, a, there's repercussions um, for this in the sense that something was going to happen. It's just... <coughs> It's just, it doesn't make sense that the thing that keeps, like, the, the, pre the, pre the president keeps doing is, like, just trying to fix the problem with a state of emergency. Uh, Jake uh, Krishnadas, uh, not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Buenas, hello. I'm, I'm okay. I'm alive. Uh, and that's what's important. Um, bespoke vocals by Kirk. Buenas. How's it going? Uh, hope you and Jamie are doing well. Uh, Daniel... When was the kid, when, when, wait, when that happened, not only the mayor and the athlete was killed, but didn't one of their mothers die of a heart attack? So es algo que quedó en duda porque Don Shader habló de eso, pero la mamá de, del alcalde parece que le dio un ataque de corazón porque él pasó eso. Sí, pues pero falleció función. o no, no falleció? No. no, she didn't pass away. She just uh, had the heart attack. I do remember Don Shader talking about that, but I wasn't sure also if she had passed away or not. As far as uh, what I had heard from Don himself, She didn't, but I wanted to confirm uh, if something had happened. Um, is it countrywide? No, solo está en Esmeraldas, Guayas y... No, Durán. Durán. Manaví. Manaví. Esmeraldas, Esmeraldas y Santo Domingo. Y Santo Domingo. So those are the four places that have the uh, state of emergency. Um, it's still a problem because they're very... I mean, at least Santo Domingo and, and I guess Durán, which is part of... Durán es parte de Guayaquil, pues. No. Durán es una ciudad adyacente a Guayaquil. Well, it's close un cantón, to Guayaquil. Un cantón. But um, none of this is solving the problem. This is just kind of prolonging a, a, a solution. I just think at this point that the uh, president just wants to wait it out, like wait until this, like his term is up and let the next person handle all the problems. Yo lo veo así. El presidente está esperando como que estado de excepción y el que el siguiente que venga que resuelva los problemas del país. Porque no está resolviendo nada, o sea, no. solo está... No han habido, pues no han habido soluciones. Ya han pasado 11 estados de sección y no han habido ni, ninguna solución completa pues, ¿no? al problema social que tenemos hoy en día. Claro. Eh, llegó Jay. Jay, buenas. Hello, how's it going? Um, let me see, the question of, uh, of Mary, Christopher, uh, is the basic problem because of drugs or drug runners? Si el problema es por los... La, los narcos o los, los que, bueno, las personas que como quien diría, trafican eh, las drogas. Es completo el panorama. O sea, lo uno lleva a lo otro. El, el narcotraficante grande genera microtráfico y eso hace que se peleen sectores que decir este, este barrio es mío, esta parte de la ciudad es mía, mm. ¿ya? Y eso hace que haya confrontamientos. Entonces, aparte de eso... Hay mucho dinero, lavado de dinero. Entonces, el que no paga, muere. Así de simple. Mm. So, there's a, the situation, I guess one thing is tied with the other. Like, the whole selling of drugs and, like, wanting to sell drugs is causing territorial conflict between the cartels, the groups that are in the country selling these drugs. So, um, you know, that conflict is, uh, is a problem in and of itself. And, um, well, we'll the last part. I forgot the last part. Del, o sea, después de, de la parte territorial, o sea... O sea, pelean por la parte territorial, ¿para qué? Para, para decir, hey, yo mando aquí, ¿me entiendes? Ya. Pero no, no, y eso ocasiona que la gente también haya lavado de dinero, lavado, ah. lavado de dinero. Entonces, yeah, yeah the, the laundering of money, there's also that situation. And when entonces, people don't pay, well, that's where you get the whole, the hits, the assassination attempts. Um, so it's, it's like a conjunction of a lot of things that are happening and that's what's, okay, that's what's causing these problems in, in well, that's why we're trying, they're trying to resolve it with a state of emergency. 
Um, let me see here. Daniel, I think if things are as bad that that let's have to declare a state of emergency in three provinces along with the assassinated, maybe he needs to take a book, at, a page out of Bukele's book. Uh, eso es el, uno de los argumentos más populares. O sea que, y, I, I saw that recently today when I was uh, looking through Twitter. Um, well, X. Um, todo el mundo, bueno, no todo el mundo, pero ahora ya se está haciendo más común la idea de que necesitamos un gobierno como lo que está haciendo Bukele. Exactamente. Se necesita un presidente con, primeramente, que no esté alineado a ninguna bandera política, porque eh, la bandera política hace que haya distanciamiento en las decisiones que se tienen que tomar. ¿okay? Entonces, como no hay un consenso general, porque no gobiernan para el pueblo, sino gobiernan para Por el interés de la... de estar ahí al frente, entonces el pueblo siempre es el que termina pagando lo las consecuencias de las malas decisiones gubernamentales. So basically, my dad does agree with the situation with needing someone like Bukele. And like the reason being because all of the people who go into trying to become president, they all have this affiliation to one of the political parties, campaigns, whatever you really want to call them, um, one of these groups. And with these groups, yes, this is my dad, uh, Don Gonzo, um, Don G. But um, basically, like I was saying, since there is the uh, the the ah, since there is that 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 link with the pre with the person trying to become president and this group, they're only looking for the interest of that group, like getting that group and their interests ahead. So there's everyone else, the Ecuadorian population, everyone who's not in the group or who doesn't belong to it, they're the ones who suffer. Everyone else is like, they're just they get like. The, the scraps, I guess you could say, and the scraps in this case are just the consequences of this group just trying to do what's good for them and not worrying about what's good for, for everyone. Um, so yeah, it does make sense that something like, like what Bukele is doing, someone who's not affiliated to any of these political, which I've always thought to myself, why do, why do people have to be on one side or the other? Isn't there like a neutral ground where we can just like help everyone out? Maybe it's, it's, it's a silly thought because, you know, I, uh, naiveness, maybe me thinking that things could be better if we all work together, but, um, <laughs> I rhymed, but um, it just feels like there's always this, no, we have to be extremely on this side or we have to be extremely on that side. And that just leads to, to wanting to make just one side better than the other and forgetting that the other side is, is human as well. And there's, there's needs to be fulfilled on this side. But anyways, that's the thought on that. Um, let me see here. Jake, what do you think about indigenous people in Ecuador? ¿Qué opinas de las personas indígenas en Ecuador? Es una pregunta un poquito complicada. Porque Complicated question. El, el indígena, al no haber tenido un respaldo dentro de su tierra para seguir produciendo la tierra, Muchos indígenas abandonaron los campos. Hoy en día los indígenas son dueños de comercios en Guayaquil. Se han, prácticamente se han apoderado de los mercados porque en los mercados mayoristas la mayoría de la gente es indígena. Entonces eh, eso ha creado como un, un monopolio también entre los pocos fuentes productivas que quedan en la parte de la sierra. Hacen que esas mismas conexiones se genere un monopolio dentro de las ciudades y los mercados. O sea, es más fácil para ellos jugar con los precios porque mi, mi pariente, mi familia o mis allegados son los que producen. Mm. So just to kind of summarize what, uh, what he said there, uh, it's, first of all, it's a complicated topic to, to talk about, but since the indigenous people didn't really have some kind of like backup, I guess you could say, in their land, they went and they created this kind of like business over in the, in the marketplaces in cities like Guayaquil and Quito. And it's kind of a monopoly because since they're the main ones who, who are in that section, if they need something, if they, if, for example, if they want to do a price hike, they have every right to do so. No, right. Well, not really, I don't know if it would be right, but they have the ability to do so because they're the ones who, who get the produce from their family, who, who are the ones who are sending it to them to, to sell it in the marketplace. So they have complete control over that. And that creates, a, like you would know, a, a sort of monopoly. So that's the situation there. 
Um, so that's his, uh, his opinion, his thoughts. Um, not like positive or negative, but just the, the reality there. Um, Cynthia, does anyone have any confidence that any of these presidential candidates can or will solve this problem? Uh, Cynthia pregunta si hay algún, alguna fe de que uno de estos candidatos presidenciales que están actualmente pueden solucionar los problemas que, que, que estamos enfrentando ahorita. Tuvimos la fe en Lazo y no pasó nada. So, the example, we had faith in Lazo and nothing. Decline now. Dice. Now we're going in, in decline instead of uh, up. Hay expectativas de, de los candidatos, ¿no? De acuerdo a las propuestas que uno analiza eh, y, y ver que le den un giro. El país necesita un giro completo, eh, una reestructuración de toda la parte administrativa, de todo lo que se llama la administración pública. Entonces, lugar que uno va, lugar que hay corrupción hospitales, jefatura de tránsito, de cedulación, el, para sacar un certificado de votación. O sea, el lugar donde uno va tiene que pagar por un servicio que es gratuito. Entonces, y para que uno le puedan agilitar un trámite hay que pagar. Entonces, el momento que se elimine la corrupción, y la corrupción más grande Pero, está, la corrupción más grande está en... En, la, en, las, en las partes altas del Estado, ministerios, entonces se podrían dar bien. Hay un candidato que tiene una propuesta muy buena, que es el señor Fernando Villavicencio, que él tiene una propuesta de poner, eliminar al amigo, eliminar al político, sino poner catedráticos con mucha experiencia y que sean los mejores en los puestos administrativos del, del Estado. Entonces, para mí esa es una excelente idea, porque por lo menos tendría un conocimiento y una base de lo que va a hacer. Pero no es posible que una provincia como Esmeraldas, hoy en día el gobernador sea un futbolista, o sea, que sabe de política, ¿entiendes? o sea, que sabe de administración. En la vida hay que prepararse. ¿Y cómo se prepara uno? Estudiando. So, um, just a really quick try to summarize everything because my brain explodes when you have to translate so much. Um, but um, basically, like I said earlier, there was faith in, in Lasso and he didn't do anything. Now uh, we have, there are expectations because as in any place, like you have candidates who give you their, their proposals, like, hey, we're gonna do this. Um, there are some that, that actually have some, some good ones, but uh, the one that my dad was mentioning, ¿cómo se llamaba? Fernando Villavicencio. Fernando Villavicencio. Fernando Villavicencio. He has this proposal to put someone in power who, who like actually has knowledge, who has experience, and not just let friends or family, people who, you know, the connections. Because the whole system right now is based on corruption. So if you have a, a connection, if, if you know someone, then, then you get things done faster. And if you don't, the only way you get things done is by paying. Like, um, just as, as, a, as a, you know, really lazy example, because I, I can't think of a better one at this moment. If you want to get your, your cédula, just your ID, you have to go through the process, you have to wait in lines, you have to be patient. Uh, they might tell you, you can't come today, you, can't, you have to come tomorrow. But if you know someone in there and you tell them, hey, you know, I need to get this done quickly, and they say, all right, uh, give me $20 and I'll make sure that you get it done first thing tomorrow morning. You pay them, you go, you get it done, and that's it. That's it. But it's through corruption. It's through corruption. Para lo mismo es para la the same thing for your license, para your passport, uh, when you want to get attended at a hospital, if you want things to flow faster. And I talked about this in my healthcare podcast episode uh, because that's what um, my friends t talked about, like, it's, it's corruption. It's, there's just so much corruption in the system that, okay. that it... Estos diles son servicios públicos. These are public services. Y eso no hay por qué pagar, pero... You shouldn't have to pay for it. Casualmente, la gente, porque ve tanta, tanta demanda de, de documentos hoy en día, entonces la gente se ve obligada a querer resolverlo rápido para poder solucionar, porque el tiempo apremia. So since there's so much demand for paperwork, documents and stuff like that, 
people want to resolve the thing quickly, so they'll pay for it. They pay to, to get it resolved, and that is corruption, um, in a way. Lo mismo so, en las notarías, todo. Que un, un documento debería ser gratis, hay que pagar 50, 60 dólares por un documento. Documents that should be free, you got to pay like 50, 60 dollars. And it's, it's ridiculous, because it's supposed to be free. Um, a ver, aquí unos comentarios de Nate. Hello, buenas. Um, security usually comes down to money. What is the average monthly, monthly salary of police? I have read where police must buy their own ammunition. Uh, yeah, I also heard about Don talking about that. Uh, are Ecuadorians willing to pay more in taxes to fund improved policing and security? So these are like two questions. Dos preguntas que están vinculadas. Nate, uh, in Arizona, hello, uh, dice que, ¿cuál es el salario de un policía mensualmente? Porque él ha escuchado que hay policías aquí que tienen que pagar sus propias municiones. Y están los ecuatorianos dispuestos a pagar por mayor cantidad de impuestos si es que hay mayor eh, seguridad de parte de policía. Primero, las, los guardias que, las personas que tienen que pagar los, en este caso las municiones, son los guardias de seguridad. Security guards are the one who have to pay for their, Privados. for the ammunition. Private security guards, okay. not the police, no la policía. No, no la policía. Not the police, just the private security guards. Ok. La, la policía tiene un asignamiento de municiones que son eh, adquiridas por el Estado y repartidas de acuerdo a la capacidad operativa de la persona en la zona que va a estar. ¿ya? Entonces, no es lo mismo estar en un pueblo que estar en una ciudad. ¿ya? Mm. Entonces, Entonces, en la ciudad te darían más, más municiones. municiones. So, sí. it depends on where you're situated, but the, okay. the police force, they are assigned a certain amount of ammunition Ammunition, ammunition, <laughs> too much uh, GTA. Uh, ammunition, um, depending on where they're situated. If you're in the countryside, you don't have a need. Like if you're not in the countryside, if you're in a small city, you don't have as much of a need for a lot of ammunition as someone who's in a big city. Like compare something, for example, like Crucita, not really a city, but a part of Puerto Viejo, in comparison to Guayaquil. Guayaquil is the well, now it's the second most populated city in Ecuador. So you need a lot more ammunition in Guayaquil than you do in a place, even like Puerto Viejo, comparando Puerto Viejo y Guayaquil. Ah, claro, lo que sucede es que antes el policía se veía limitado a usar el arma. Esa regla cambió. O sea, el policía hoy ya le puede disparar a un delincuente y va a tener el respaldo del Estado. All right. So before the policeman, and this is where the complication comes in with the, with the bullets, I guess you could say with the ammunition, is before there was the limitation. Policemen, and that was a fear that a lot of police had here. If you shoot someone, you get in trouble. Like you're trying to prevent a crime, you, you go to jail. Like you're trying to prevent a crime and you, get, you go to jail for, for helping someone out. But now that law has changed. It's shifted, it's flipped upside down. Now, the government, the police, like, they are backed. So if, if the policeman stops a criminal through shooting them, now you actually get, like, like the, the support. Like, it's not like, oh, you killed someone, you go to jail. No, policeman, good job, you're a hero, thank you for your service. Sorry, sorry. So it's, it's better. Pero ahí otra vez la pregunta que, que había hecho, que, eh, ¿tú crees que las personas estarían dispuestas a pagar más en impuestos si es que la policía haría mejor su trabajo? Es que eso no tiene nada que ver lo uno con lo otro, porque con los impuestos que se paga es de acuerdo a los sueldos que se tiene acá. Entonces, no, tú no puedes pagar más de lo que ya está establecido. Ahora, en Colombia, años atrás, en la época del 90, 80, 90, se generó una ley, dice, la ley del, o sea, el impuesto de guerra que se le cargó un valor adicional a los impuestos normales es como aquí el impuesto al rodaje, ¿ok? El que tiene carro tiene que pagar un poquito más para poder rodar en, en el país, mm. ¿ok? Entonces en Colombia, para poder combatir a las mafias que habían en esa época, el gobierno generó un impuesto de guerra que se lo pagó casi por 15 años. Mm. So, using an example uh, for Eso the whole tax situation, uh, the situation with the taxes, there was a time in Colombia where there was a tax for, to try to get rid of the, the mafias, to try to get rid of, not the mafias, I guess you could say the, the cartels. And that tax went on for 15 years. 
and um, he says like here you, you like you can't charge more tax because there's a, there's already a minimum wage. There's already a salary, and your taxes are based on that salary. That's if you were to, I guess, o sea, si tengo que suponer, if you were to increase it, it wouldn't go well with the salary of the citizens because it. Yo viendo lo de esta forma, o sea, si tú eres una persona de aquí y tienes que pagar más en impuesto, pero tu sueldo se mantiene igual, no. Claro, no, no es equitativo. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't balance. Like if you're like, just look at the minimum wage, 450. If you pay more in taxes. How, is, how are you going to be able to pay more in taxes? It would be very complicated, at least uh, for people here, unless you raise their, their salary. But then it just kind of is the same thing. You're raising their salary just to give them more taxes. So you're not really raising their salary. You're just kind of balancing it out. Um, seems kind of a strange thing. Primero um, saludar aquí. Lisa, hello. Lisa Thais, how's it going? Uh, también... Mr. Carlos, hello. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying. The translation is very difficult. More like interpretation of the main ideas and trying to, to compound Porque it. Porque las palabras en español también son complicadas. Mm -hmm. O sea, más que todo, una traducción exacta. Exacto, claro. Uh, DJ Antonio, hello. Uh, all government should be neutral. The United States divided now and needs to be reset. I thought this last of dismantling Congress was going to help. Sí, o sea, los gobiernos deberían ser neutrales, eh, Estados Unidos ahorita está dividido y pensó que Lazo deshaciéndose de, de... De la asamblea. Sí, o sea, ayudaría, pero... No, no. porque se encontró con un tropiezo que se llama la Corte Constitucional. Yeah, he found himself in conflict with the, con with the Congressional Court, so... He, he's got to fight them now. Um, ahí Daniel tiene una pregunta, si piensa que Luisa González sería una buena presidenta. Eh, opinar de política es un poco complicado porque eh, eh, primeramente la candidata tiene su pasado. The candidate has, uh, Luisa has her past. O sea, si ella estuvo en la asamblea y tiene una coima de 700 y pico de mil de dólares. ¿Coima es? Coima es una, una denuncia. Ah, so she used to be in the, in Congress and she has... She actually has a, a case, I guess you could say, of a, a fine, if not. Y si ella no la ha solucionado, ¿cómo le permiten participar? If she hasn't solved it, like, how is she participating? Why is she allowed to participate? Uh, la pregunta de Davy Van Ville, uh, I'll, you can check out my... Um, no, es, no sería para mí una buena alternativa porque es una candidata manipulada. So for him, she's not a good candidate. Uh, before I go into the question, for him, she's not a good candidate because she's like a manipulated candidate, I guess you could say. Uh, but going into Davy's question really quick, uh, you can go to Quito if you want. Um, if you're not in the country, you can go to Quito. It's just, um, you can watch my uh, video, the Accepting Ecuador's Reality, and I talk a little bit more about this. But, um, and you'll be fine. I mean, I, if you're just going for touristic purposes, you should be fine. That's the, the, a bit of a summary there of that topic when I talked in that video. Um, you can go. Just um, take the necessary precautions as with uh, any situation. Um, aquí la pregunta de Jake. ¿Por qué el gobierno de Ecuador permite eh, sacar petróleo de la, de la Amazonía? Esto lo vienen haciendo desde el año 72. They've been doing this since the year, since 1972. the 70s. 72, 1972. 1972. Yeah. So, empezó el boom de la era petrolera que supuestamente nos iba a traer progreso. Pero el progreso no llega a ni a So, there was, um, there was, a uh, there was the boom of, uh, you know, mining oil, mining petrol, um, digging for oil. And um, it was supposed to bring, you know, prosperity to Ecuador, but it doesn't even bring prosperity to the places that, that it's, being, it's being dug up from. So it's just, I, I, there's, we can't say why, other than we were hoping that, like, I guess Ecuador, the government was hoping that it would bring Ecuador prosperity, but, um, It, it didn't. It, antes, just, it didn't. Antes del petróleo, 
el primer país, que el primer producto que Ecuador exportaba era banana, luego cacao, luego café, luego el oro. O sea, antes del petróleo hubo una, un auge del banano, que era lo que le generaba mayor divisa al Ecuador. Hoy en día, el petróleo, la, la economía del Estado, se ha vuelto una economía dependiente del petróleo. Entonces, por eso es que hoy en día, si dicen, si no se explota el, el Yasuní, que esa es la pregunta en cuestión, dice, se perderían 1.500 millones de dólares solamente en la parte productiva. Ahora, entre la parte de retirar todo lo ensamblado allá, sería un costo de 5 mil millones de dólares. O sea, el problema ya no le quedaría al presidente que va a entrar ahora, sino para todos los gobiernos que vengan en adelante, porque no van a tener ese rubro que entra actualmente por la explotación petrolera. ¿Cinco mil millones sería billón? O no, es más. Cinco mil millones, esa es la cantidad que... Dijeron. Es que no sé cómo se traduce eso, cinco, pero cinco millones. No, cinco mil millones, cinco mil millones. O sea, mil quinientos millones serían la cantidad que dejaría de entrarle al Estado por año. Bueno, um, to, to, to summarize a bit of uh, what my dad was saying right there, um, there's a lot of things that Ecuador, before they started mining oil or digging up oil, that they were known for, that uh, the, country was, the country had, which was banana, um, cacao. coffee, cacao, yeah. gold. Yeah. Those were the main things that Ecuador was really like, producing and exporting at the time before the before, before oil and then afterwards oil came and hey this is going to be the great ne the big thing the next thing it wasn't um, and now to get rid of that you'd be you'd be hitting ecuador with like a really hard like debt that wouldn't just affect the current president but many governments to come because while i can't really say what the value would be there but it's like millions of dollars Um, millions and millions, like that um, it, it would affect the next president, uh, the president afterwards. So it's like you can't just get rid of it because you'd be getting rid of uh, an economic source and you'd have to get rid of the things that were in the rainforest that cost the country a lot of money. So it's kind of, I guess you could say, um, I guess if you want to look at it as, a, as an easy example, like if you start a business that cost you $500,000 and, and then the next day they tell you you have to get rid of it, you're like, oh no, why would I, but that cost me so much money, why would I get rid of it? And I'm still earning something from it. So it's like, eh. um, it, it's, it's conflictive to, to what you would think considering how much you invested in it and how much consequences it could have towards the future. Um, a ver, continuando, let's continue. Um, I saw Nate's comment, Nate in, um, in Cuenca now. I hope you're enjoying Cuenca. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, uh, Miguel, Pan Miguel, quedo debiendo el, el Pokémon. Um, BP, hello. Uh, how's it going? Um, let me see here. So let me answer some of the other questions that were here. Uh, Um, Nate pregunta eh, si los candidatos presidenciales tienen que tener una, un plan de seguridad con detalles. O sea, cada candidato dice que seguridad es una prioridad, pero ¿cuál es el plan? El político es como el matrimonio. Se <laughs> ofrece muchas cosas y no se cumple. So, uh, easy answer to this. Uh, the politician uh, is like someone, or is like a marriage. Or politi politics are like a marriage. A lot of things are promised, but... Um, You know, not all of them Politico. come through. Son políticos. They're, they're politicians. Uh, what do you expect? <laughs> That's the easy answer there. Uh, cinco años atrás, nos habían dicho que no habían drogas en Ecuador. ¿Qué cambió? Eso fue lo que dice Mary Christopher. Es una mentira. That's a lie. <laughs> ah. That's a lie. That's en, a, the easy en, en mi pueblo, en mi pueblo hace... In his uh, city where he came from. His village. Yo tenía 13, 14 años y ya circulaba la cocaína. When he was 13 or 14 years old, cocaine was already circulating around where he was at. De Perú. And they were on the frontier of Peru. But, which, by the way, I saw the comment from uh, Mr. 
uh, Carlos uh, about the translations. Carlos is in, in Lima, so I hope you're doing well over there. Um, dang, I lost a comment. So many comments. Um, bueno, so la, that's the situation. Ah, yeah, there we go, Carlos. Uh, the translation, yeah, 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 from Lima. Um, let me see, what difference does religion have to do with anything? Uh, bro, what religion? Uh, bueno, no sé, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to answer that question, what religion, because I don't think religion has anything to do with this. Um, let me see here. Cat, we just went to Quito, love it, but ran into a poquetero. There's one que alguien que te throw. I'm guessing a pickpocket. Uh, unfortunate, cat. I hope you're okay. Um, you and everyone who was with you. Um, let's see here. Individual tax rate can be progressive, where lower income earners pay less or nothing. Uh, tax rate can be progressive depending on the income. Um, sí, existe eso. Eh, Impuestos que son progresivos, digamos que donde las personas que tienen mayor ingresos pagan menos y los que tienen mayor pagan más. Se estableció una norma eso en el gobierno de Lenín Moreno, pero es bien difícil que se cumpla. There was something that was uh, uh, done during uh, Lenín Moreno's uh, government, but it's hard to, for that to actually be implemented, apparently. Pero todo el mundo miente. Because everyone lies. <laughs> oh, no. Um, Mira, de, un ejemplo. Jaco Pérez. Ok. Ok, so an example, Jaco Pérez. Candidato a la presidencia. Candidate to presidency. En los dos últimos años, no ha pagado impuestos. In the last two years, he has not paid any no taxes. Impuestos. Ok. Oh, well, F. That's Ahora, a fail. Ahora, el resto de candidatos declaran impuestos por cuatro mil dólares, tres mil dólares, cuando tienen un costo de vida demasiado alto. Mm. The rest of the candidates declare taxes uh, but like 4,000, 5,000, like little amounts of money and you know that they're that they're earning much more than that. So it's a fail. Uh, I'm getting to everyone's questions by the way. I'm seeing some of the comments. Uh, Rodi, buena suerte en el entrenamiento. Hay Natalia, saludos. Saludos Natalia. Hola. <laughs> Hello, k and uh, Hope you can check it out later. Um, let me see here. Still checking out a lot of the questions. Uh, Supuestamente político que deja un poco de corrupción lleva la paz con tal de que sea bueno con el público. Parece que sí. Si es que no lo llegan a odiar los demás por enterarse. Um, VPE from North Michigan, just in picking blueberries for restaurant. Good. Hope you're doing well, VPE. Thank you, thank you. The YouTube video, heavy topic. Um, a ver, Bespoke dice, I hear Lasso didn't do anything, which ignores that he was blocked by a Congress that favored Korea. I'm looking at the situation from afar, but still, Lasso is limited by the rules of the death, the mutual death, and still facing a Congress that is against him. I just wonder why only he gets to hit. Ah, um, si, sí, eso es algo interesante, porque... O sea, tenemos la idea de que, o sea, y eso, I think I, I talked about that more or less in the, in the video, but um, Lazo, todos le culpan a Lazo, pero si Lazo está siendo bloqueado por la, la Corte uh, Constitucional, o sea, Hay la culpa... Hay culpables, o sea, pero siempre dicen, es el gobierno, o sea, al gobierno, Y como él es la cabeza. Claro, el gobierno lo comprenden los ministerios, las cortes, fiscalías, todo eso implica un gobierno, ¿ok? Ya no hay la asamblea. Pero hay los otros poderes del Estado. Hay el Ejecutivo, ya no hay el Legislativo, pero hay el Judicial, ¿ok? Hay el Consejo de Participación Ciudadana, un, un, un poder que le otorgaron a cinco señores que deciden por 17 millones de personas. Cuando ellos dicen nosotros decidimos por el pueblo, no nos consultan al pueblo. Pero ¿qué pasa? Como tienen una bandera... Ese es el Congreso, un, no, es la Asamblea. No, eso se llama el Consejo de Participación Ciudadana. Oh, yeah. okay. el que es el quinto poder del Estado hoy en día. Oh, yeah, yeah. Entonces, se lo quiso disolver en el referéndum, pero la gente no apoyó para disolverlo. O sea, que ya no, no exista, porque en realidad fue algo creado para conveniencia, para poner personas a dedo en puestos claves, en puestos estratégicos para la dirección del Estado. 
So um, trying to, to explain the situation, basically Lasso is the head of the government. Like, first of all, that's, that's the main problem here. So even if, if everyone behind him is at fault, the people see Lasso. They see the president and they blame the president because he's the person that they see. Um, but the fault lies in, like we said here, maybe congressional court. And there's also this, this power in, as a part of, um, of, I guess you could say Congress, that assigns five people who are pretty much the representatives for the Ecuadorian population. And the problem with these people is that they, take, they make decisions for everyone without consulting everyone. And I realistically know that you can't, you can't like get, let's just say, 17 million people to agree. That's just impossible. Um, no matter how you, you want them, unless everyone wants to agree that, that kittens and puppies are cute, I'm pretty sure we can all be on the same page of, on that. But like, it's, it's difficult for a person like five people to make decisions for everyone. And those five people aren't necessarily in that position of power to actually do their job. Their mission and the reason why that uh, power in the government was, was established is basically just to be a manipulated party so that these people can put whoever they want into positions of power. For and convenience. For convenience. So once again, the whole situation with family, friends, so if you have this, this part of, of politics where they can do what they want and like they can set up whoever they want, that's a problem. And when we had the recent elections, eso fue para los candidatos de, de alcalde, ¿verdad? Que se hizo también esa, esa encuesta. No, eso fue para... Creo que sí. sí en yeah, la, yeah. En, sí. During the, the campaign for mayors that we recently passed, que se llamó eso. there was a referendum that... Um, that basically asked the people, do you want to eliminate this, this extra, this extra, I guess you could say, power in the, in the system? And the majority voted no for it. So it stays there and, and it's a problem because it's, it's, just, a, it's just a power that the Hoy government, día, that the, it's not needed. Hay partidos políticos que se alinearon para que no se elimine eso y para que no se, eli para que se elimine para que la gente vote por el no a la extradición, para que vote por el no a la eliminación del Consejo de Participación Ciudadana, pero hubieron partidos políticos alineados a esa parte. O sea, que no les convenía. No, no, ellos no quieren que se elimine eso. Pero Otra vez, todo es conveniencia. conveniencia. Everything is convenience. There are political parties that are aligned to try to get rid of that power, but there are others that need it, that want it there. Personalmente, para mí, que no exista eso, Personalmente para mí que la extradición debería existir. Personalmente para mí que la pena de muerte debería haber aquí en el Ecuador. So for him, that party shouldn't exist. Uh, the death penalty uh, should exist. No sé qué es la extradición. Extradición es cuando tú cometes un delito y te pueden deportar. Es en este caso... Eh, Exilio o exilación. ¿Cómo? Exilio ser exiliado. No, no, no. Extradición es cuando tú vas castigado. Tú vas castigado de un país preso a cumplir tu pena en otro país con una penalidad más grande. Ah, so basically uh, he's in agreement with this thing called uh, extradición, which is basically where if you commit a crime here and you're sentenced to something here, they can send you to another country where you can get a worse sentence. And he agrees that that's no should chapo, exist. El Chapo lo capturaron en México y lo extraditaron a Estados Unidos para juzgarlo allá por la cantidad de drogas que metió en los Estados Unidos. Like El Chapo, who uh, basically, uh, you know, he was the one who brought the drugs. Nadie aquí del Ecuador no tiene extradición, pero a un narco ecuatoriano que lo cogieron en Colombia ya lo extraditaron a Estados Unidos y está pagando, fue juzgado en Estados Unidos. There was one that was caught who was from Ecuador, uh, a uh, narco, a cartel member, uh, mafia, drug lord, uh, and he was caught in Colombia and sent to the States to get a heavier punishment. Um, a ver, uh, VP, isn't another issue Korea negotiated super cheap on price on oil? So you are reaping profits from higher price and damage to indigenous land issues. Uh, VP pregunta si, o sea, acerca de lo que pasó con Corea para negociar precios más baratos en lo que es el petróleo. Eh, estamos eh, recibiendo ganancia de mayores precios y daño a las tierras indígenas, o sea, 
la, la situación con eso, o sea, si se puede explicar. No. Bien difícil la respuesta. Si recibimos beneficios, no lo sé, porque no se los ve. Uh, if we get any, uh, any, uh, any benefits, we're not seeing it from that Ahora, increased oil cuando, price. Cuando Or, comienza una extracción, por mínima que sea, va a haber destrucción. Eso es normal. No, no matter what happens, if you start taking out oil, petrol, uh, and no problem, Kirk, like there's always going to be destruction no matter what. It's just the reality más que usen every country. tecnología de punta que le llaman hoy en día, igual siempre va a haber, van a tener que talar árboles, destruir la naturaleza, generar campamentos para que la gente viva. Basically the reality of if you, you know, you start taking oil, a lot of destruction is going to happen. Ah, y Jay dice que um, tu español es muy bien dicho, o sea, muy anunciado para que sea entendible. Para los trato, demás. Dile que, trato de usar. He's trying to, to make it like, you know, very understandable. When eso, he talks fast, he also eso talks dile fast. Que le agradezco a mi hermana que me cultivó. He's, uh, he's thankful to his sister who, you know, Ella uh, de taught literatura. him well. She's a literature professor. By the way, buenas to everyone who's joining. Buenas, hello to everyone. Hola a todos que están uniéndose. Uh, if you're getting value, if you like this live stream, please uh, leave a like. Si les gusta esta hora, eh, dejen un like. Uh, it helps me out, ayuda. Um, so I appreciate it. Agradezco. Uh, we have 67 people. Hello, everyone. Um, let me see here. Según Daniel, si estás de acuerdo con que mayores impuestos es solo más dinero para los políticos. Mayores impuestos generan más complicaciones al pueblo. Y lógicamente, el dinero va, es el de los impuestos, ¿a dónde va? a las arcas del Estado para pagar eh, sueldos y, y en este caso eh, el proyectos, dentro de los proyectos que hay siempre van a haber eh, lo que se llaman los, las coimas, ¿no? que nunca llega el presupuesto real de una obra porque ya antes fue dividido en porcentajes para los que lo canalizaron, los que lo ejecutan y cuando ya llega al pueblo pues ya llega lo mismo. So basically, uh, aside from it, like going to the politicians, because yeah, they have to pay for the people who work for them and everything, because the money that's the taxpayers' money, you know, goes to paying stuff of the state. But remember, the people who are in the state are being, you know, um, they're family, friends. So like, if I'm a politician and uh, I have my worker, my worker might be a family member or a friend, and the taxpayers' money is just going to me to pay to him. Or her, and um, not just that, but it also causes a problem with the population because they're the ones who who see the the disadvantages because they're paying higher taxes, and um, de, it's not convenient. Del presupuesto general del estado, del que se destina para lo que es obra. Oh, and something else. Que que son para obras y todo eso. Siete mil millones, o sea, siete mil millones de dólares anuales se van solamente en corrupción. So about that much money, uh, 7 mil millones, which I'm still not sure how to translate, I just say it's like 700 million, um, is just going into corruption. So it's, it's kind of, it, to me it's frustrating every time I hear that. Like, it's a conversation that's later going to split my head because I'm going to be like, ugh. But um, aside from what I was just mentioning about the situation, my dad did talk about um, how another part of corruption that sometimes there are these things that are supposed to be done for the, for the population. Uh, let's just say hospitals being built, schools, uh, roads, and there's always a budget for that. But the budget isn't the reality because they say, for example, this costs a uh, million dollars, but in reality, it only costs, let's just say 500,000. But they put a million so that way they can take the other 500,000 for themselves. 20% para el que lo ejecuta, 20% para el el que lo canalizó al proyecto. ¿sí? Yeah. So, um, if I approve the project, uh, I get my cut for approving the project. So, it's it, corruption at its finest. Dile que um, yo entiendo un poquito más de esto, que se está hablando de economía, porque yo estudié siete semestres de economía. Entonces, he understands this better because he studied uh, economy, to be an economist. So, it's like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, Daniel, exactly. They pocket that extra cash. I saw some people saying hi, uh, Evilk, hello, hola, de Francia. 
Uh, I hope everything is well in France. Espero que todo esté bien en Francia. Que se haya calmado, dile. That the situation has calmed down a bit uh, over there, because I did hear there was problems. Sí, había problemas allá. Congratulations que Francia le ganó ayer a Brasil en el Mundial Femenino. Ah, congratulations to France for being, for being a... It was a good game. The women's. Um, also, Walter, hola, hello. Uh, Juicebox, hello. Um, I will uh, continue going down uh, in questions in a bit. I'm still up here. Um, BP, pregunta, te pregunta a ti, eh, ¿qué opinas acerca de las, de una mujer soltera moviendo, eh, o sea, digamos estando acá y, y como quien diría, no sé si estoy paseando, porque no estoy seguro cómo traducir eso exacto, pero eh, estando aquí como que en un Haciendo país. Turismo. Son, son, serían blancos, digamos, serían, no sé si llamarlo blanco, pero serían algún, alguien como que una persona quisiera... Eh, Aprovecharse de ella. Sí, algo así. No, yo creo que la precaución en el ser humano es personal. Si ¿sí? una mujer, no solo la mujer, un hombre, una pareja que va a un lugar siempre vas a estar expuesto a que te pueda suceder algo, ¿me entiendes? Porque cuando tú sales de tu zona de confort a una zona que tú no conoces, lógicamente todo es nuevo. Entonces, eh, la seguridad siempre va a partir de uno mismo. This is kind of a, the, the end result that how I always end up talking about uh, safety. Uh, it really depends on you, like on each person. Um, it's, it's personal. So it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, like if you go out of your comfort zone, like w what could happen to you is really unknown. You, you wouldn't be able to say. And I talked about this in my, um, in my can you find work video. I, I made a, this an explanation that like the level of danger that you face really depends on, on you. Like, are you going out with your phone in your hand? Are you going out with jewelry? Are you going out by yourself? Are you going out at night? So, yes, gender might be a factor that might increase it a little bit more because there are people who think that women are more susceptible, which isn't the truth. There are really powerful women out there, and I applaud that a lot. Remember, if you're a, a woman, like, if you can take some martial arts classes, go for it. No es, um, lo, no es lo mismo que estés en Guayaquil, en San Borondón, que no es lo mismo que te vayas tú a, al Guadmo. Yeah, so there's also differences in the city, like, in the parts of the city, in Guayaquil, you can't be in San Borondón and expect the same thing as, as El Guasmo. Like el Guasmo, it, El Suburbio, La Perimetral, tantas cosas nuevas que se han generado donde todos los días hay robo en cantidad. So yeah, basically zones where you know are dangerous, like if you go to those zones, then yeah, you, you're expecting to get claro. some kind of thing happen to you. La seguridad de uno, como una persona turista normal, no hay problema, porque uno va con más precaución. Pero en cambio los mochileros, los que dicen hoy en día, eh, dicen que son mochileros, primero por la forma de vivir, y ellos siempre van a buscar los lugares más peligrosos para establecerse. Porque yo lo he visto. ¿me porque es más barato. Más barato y, y también este, por la forma como viven. Nadie los acepta casi. People who are, uh, I'm not sure if you no call No tengo it. nada contra ellos, pero es la forma que uno analiza. Lo percibe, así, así por lo que ve. Uh, there are people who are backpackers, I guess you could say, people who travel around with their backpack, and they always end up going to these dangerous zones because it's just cheaper, and it's places that people will accept them more. So they are kind of more at risk. He has no problem with people who do that, but it's just the way that people perceive the situation. But anyways, that's the situation, BP. Um, Cynthia, uh, Cynthia Placido, pregunta, does everyone file taxes? ¿Todo el mundo eh, declara impuestos todos mm. los años en Ecuador? No. No, I do. I have to. Um, Nosotros but, pagamos yeah. impuestos por el negocio. Pagamos he pays them for the business, la propiedad. For the property. Yeah. Pagamos impuestos cuando hacemos compras. When we pero buy no stuff. es una obligación la declaratoria de impuestos personal porque no tenemos un sal, no tenemos un, un sueldo. O sea, no estamos regidos por un sueldo. But filing taxes is uh, not necessary because you don't have like a, uh, a like a stable salary, like something that you earn consistently. Okay, he's gonna drink some water, he'll be right back. Um, but yeah, let me see here. Uh, K&M, yeah, earlier I saw K&M's message. I hope K&M can check that out in a bit. Um, a little bit of a pause, I guess, while we wait for my dad to come back. 
Um, either way, once again, I'd like to thank everyone who's here, uh, 70 viewers, thank you very much. Uh, if you like this stream, please, once again, uh, like it, leave your comments, your information, uh, you know, not information, but saying hi, how's it going, uh, your questions. Uh, we appreciate the, the feedback, the, um, the interaction, um, and it helps me out a lot. Um, if there's any questions that I can't answer here, like, we still have more time, of course, but if there's anything we don't get to answer, you can always send me an email. Um, my business email is in the description. We're not done with the live stream, by the way, so uh, stick around. Um, but this is so far the conversation that we're having. Um, I see the next question is for my dad. That's why I, I kind of want to make a pause. Uh, Daniel's question, Don, do you get nervous after dark when at the restaurants? Um, oh, hello, Kathy. <laughs> Katerine, how's it going? Um, I just saw this message. I wanted to reply to it fast. Um, I hope you're well. We're, uh, we're doing okay. The only problem is I'm still injured. <laughs> uh, I will still be injured until the end of, uh, of August. Well, injured. I don't know if I'm better because I, I, I can't say I feel pain, but I also haven't given myself the luxury of you know, stepping, so that way I know if there's actual pain in my, in my, in my foot. But um, I do feel like it's gotten a lot better than it was before. But, um, you know, we have to wait. We have to be patient. I just can't do sports right now, and it's getting kind of frustrating being locked indoors. All right, so he's back. Um, una pregunta para ti acerca de que si te pones nervioso cuando, eh, cuando estás en el negocio después de cuando se hace tarde. O sea, si te da miedo, si... No, 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 nervio, no, preocupado, sí. He's worried, but not exactly, he doesn't feel nervous. Uh, be, you know, everyone is worried when there's so many things that could happen. Porque mi negocio no está en una área mala, sino está en una zona que por lo menos debe, pasa la, la autoridad, en este caso la policía, pasa constantemente. Entonces no es lo mismo el área central o expense de acá de Puerto Viejo que un área periférica. Yeah, there's a bit of a difference um, in the sense that he's in a zone. La locación sería la locación. The location. He's in a location that's a little bit safer in the sense that police do pass by. It's just, I mean, if we talk about like how convenient it is, it's still a problem because people still aren't going out because they're afraid. But um, he's in a zone where it's a little bit less dangerous, I guess you could say. And that makes it a little bit easier for him. Um, and that's why he's just, he's worried, of course, but not necessarily nervous. Uh, and the tax return, I, if I, if what tax return is what I think it is, yes, there are tax returns. Um, I think Don Shader has talked about this too. If you file your taxes, if you file everything, you do get a tax return. Even, uh, me, I get like, whatever I'm like, whatever I get paid, there's like a 10% that I get taken from, from the academy. And that 10% accumulated in the 12 months after the year is done, uh, typically around March, uh, we get that back. It's like having a little bit of an, an extra salary for one month, but it's not, it's not a lot because um, my base salary isn't a lot. So the 10% that's being taken from me, it comes back, of course, but it's just a small amount. Um, and I don't even use that. I use that more for uh, my phone, not the phone bill, for the internet bills here. It's like money I don't even touch. Um, let me see here, uh, ebook, all right, uh, I appreciate the, hold up, let me like that because now I can, no, 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 how do you like this? Um, I appreciate that, I'm going to heart it because now you can heart this. Do you think you could help me constructing my house in Ecuador, already own an apartment in Quito, but I would like to build a house, need local contact in Quito, I don't want the gringo price, lol. Uh, get in touch to me, get in touch with me through my email and we'll talk about that. I can, I can definitely find a way to help you out with that because I, I know the gringo pricing sucks, but um, I, I think I have a solution for you there. Um, and yes, I, it, personal solution, not just me sending you out to someone else, by the way. Um, appreciate the donation, by the way. We, we appreciate it because this, this stream, there's something we have to talk about, I, I guess. We, we can talk about it now, um, and then we'll continue answering the questions. Um, so 
para hablarles acerca de la situación que... Hola. Mira, ya, 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 ya mira, primero déjame eh, explicar. First, let me explain. So, um, so we, we have a, a situation here with this whole state of emergency and the curfew. Um, as a lot, of, uh, a lot of people know, because I've, I've talked about it quite publicly, because I don't, I don't think there's anything that I need to hide here, um, the situation is tough here. Uh, for some people, I know the places that you're living at, more pricey, uh, it's more difficult, but the situation here keeps like, it keeps getting tougher by, by the day. And if you, look at, if you look at how the situation is for, for someone, like, you can say that it's, it's okay because you don't really see it, but it does tend to get tougher even if it's things that you don't see. I've talked about the price hikes for certain foods, uh, vegetables, oil, the things that we oh, always sure. talk about. Everything keeps going up, but salaries don't go up. My dad has his, his business, his restaurant, he sells things, and it's not like he's selling more or he's increasing the price. He recently, after years, made a tiny price hike of like 10 cents. And it's been after like years, or like 25 cents or something. But um, it, it's, it's not enough to compensate for what's happening. So the situation itself is, uh, is getting tougher. That's why here on the channel, when someone uh, helps out with, with anything, like if, you, uh, if you're watching the videos, that's a, a good support. If you're sharing them, that's good support. If you're leaving comments, if you're liking the video, that's good support. If you're a member, which by the way, I would like to say uh, thank you to the channel members and to the Buy Me A Coffee members. Right now I have a list. Um, Jay Jansen, thank you very much. Raylan Givens, thank you very much. William Menzies, thank you very much. Brian Wilson was a member, but he canceled recently, but I still appreciate the time that he supported the channel, so thank you very much. Candice, thank you very much. These are the Buy Me A Coffee members who have bought me, a, who have become members on Buy Me A Coffee and support me on a monthly day, ba basis. I appreciate uh, the support because without you, this is much tougher. And I know a lot of people could say, but you started doing this without the support. Yes, but the support helps make this better. You've noticed that I've made more videos recently because I have the ability to make more videos. And that's because of the support that I'm getting because I see that it's possible to make more videos and, and now I can do it. Like, and, and it's like a job, so it helps me out a lot. For the YouTube members, Daniel Johnson, the YouTube members, you can see them in the chat. Their name is highlighted in green and they have the logo of my channel next to their name, but I will read out their names. Daniel Johnson, thank you very much for being a YouTube member. Mark Horning, thank you very much for being a member. Lisa Thais, same thing, I appreciate your support. Crooks Hideaway, I don't think he's commented today, but I appreciate, or I don't know him or her, uh, but you've supported the channel and I appreciate it. Mark Moran, he's not here right now, but I appreciate the support. Uh, Bespoke, you're actually here. Thank you very much for being a member. Same thing with Daniel. Uh, Rick Royce, thank you very much. Robert Stewart, I haven't seen his comments yet today, but he's always been very supportive of the channel. Thank you very much. Curtis Mandrake, same thing. I appreciate it. And David Hernandez, who's a new member, I appreciate the support. It helps me out, and I always appreciate it. Uh, don't think that it, I'm not appreciative. It's, it's the main thing I'm always thinking of. I'm always thinking of how to give more value because this is something that you don't necessarily have to do, but if you become a member and you support me, it, it's, it's next level, like, and I'm really appreciative of it. Um, but now I'm gonna let my dad uh, explain a little bit of the current situation we're facing with the curfew and the state of emergency and, and how these next two months are gonna be, because it's not just today that we're facing this problem, it's gonna be from now until a little bit later. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, I, I actually know who Raylan is, but that's the, the alias that he set up, so I just call him Raylan. Uh, I call him Ray, actually, but yeah. Um, he is a supporter on Buy Me A Coffee. But yeah, um, para que explique igual lento para irlo traduciendo cuál es la situación. Nosotros venimos pasando una situación complicada desde el año 2020. So we've been having this problem here, like personally, and we're talking about mm. us here, the family, since uh, the year 2020. Okay, con vino primeramente el COVID. Uh, we had COVID. La regulación del trabajo, que solamente se podía trabajar de 2 de la tarde a 7 de la noche. The, the specific time frame of work that was given here, which was from 2 in the afternoon until 7 at night. You could only work 
during those hours. Entonces fue marzo, abril, mayo, junio y julio. Cinco meses que se tuvo que trabajar así. It was March, April, May, June, Julio. and July. Those five months we had to go through that situation. Like working with that schedule um, and through COVID. Que tuvimos que ir adaptándonos a una forma de trabajo sin clientes. We had to adapt to this situation of working without like physical customers. Okay. Entonces, solamente se trabajó, se trabajaba no internamente en los negocios, sino solamente por deliveries. We only worked through delivery, like Porque not no, inside nadie, the actual business, but yeah. delivery, because no one could go out. It, it was impossible. Everyone who went through COVID, I think everyone here, everybody lived this situation. Everyone lived this situation. Okay. After this, and remember, this was before. We're talking about 2020. So it's not now, by the way. It's not now. This is 2020. Después de eso vino eh, mi enfermedad en el año 2021. Then my dad ended up getting sick in 2021 with COVID. Estuve 41 días out fuera de, del negocio. He had 41 days where he couldn't work at the business. Rehabilitarme del COVID. Until he felt better from COVID. Entonces, and it was a little bit more, y fue más complejo porque, claro. because he had this problem with uh, one of his lungs and he has this complication with one of his lungs, yeah. which we're still unsure if it's only because of him working at a grill because he uh, grills food or if it was his time in the United States where he was working as a plumber and with a lot of, you know, heavy plumbing, chemicals and stuff like that, that de plata y de uh, welding and stuff of, um, of silver and stuff like that, but, well, not silver, maybe iron. Um, but yeah. Entonces, vino esa complicación y volvió. como estábamos con el COVID, otra vez un año más prácticamente trabajar en pérdidas. So, since we were still in this whole situation of the COVID era, it was a whole nother year of working, but not with gains, but with losses. Because when you don't earn money, you like lose it. And by the way, I saw a, a, two super chats, but one um, again from Evoke. Uh, thank you very much. We, uh, we appreciate it. Um, and hopefully, yeah, hopefully he can join us. Like we said, if we let him know ahead of time, he can join us on more of these, um, of these lives. Okay, ahora sí. Entonces, eso ha ido complicándonos la vida, primeramente a nivel eh, nacional, y hoy en día nos toca a las familias. ¿Por qué? Porque nosotros como... Cabezas de familia somos los que ponemos la cara a los problemas. So this situation um, has been, I guess you could say, complicating. Uh, bueno, otra vez que se me se fue los, la idea bien. Ese es un problema nacional. O this sea, is a national problem. Que la, después del COVID, After COVID, vinieron los estados de excepción. We had the states of emergency. Entonces, regulaciones en el tiempo de trabajo. There were these regulations in the time that you could work. Entonces, el cliente, eh, eso ha hecho que las personas tengan miedo a salir. This has made people uh, afraid of going out. And, well, part of what he said earlier, which he didn't repeat, but the people who have to, like, face these problems are the heads of the family, the people who are in the position to, to have to face these problems. And uh, Daniel, by the way, thank you very much for the donation. I'll read the comments in a second. Entonces, eso hace que nosotros, los que tenemos los negocios, los pocos ahorros que teníamos para producir, hoy en día ya prácticamente estén agotados. So, this has caused a problem where business owners who had like some money like in reserves, like, you know, just in case, basically those reserves are like done. Uh, they, there's no reserves left. And now it's pretty much working in negatives. Muchos colegas que tenemos los mismos negocios ya han declinado porque no se lo puede sostener por las regulaciones que el gobierno ha venido dando por las limitaciones en el tiempo de trabajo. A lot of colleagues that have similar businesses as, uh, as, as us, as my dad, um, have suffered the consequences of the regulations that the government has been, has been putting out there. Uh, not just in, in, uh, in the things that they ask for, but the amount of time that they can work. Entonces, si a eso le agregamos a la inestabilidad política. If we add to that the political instability. A la crisis económica. 
the economic crisis, a la crisis social, the social crisis, y al problema ahorita del invierno que tuvimos fuerte, entonces, oh, and also the, the rainy season that we had that was really strong, entonces eso ha hecho que nos complique más la existencia a los que dependemos de un negocio. This has made it more complicated for the people who depend on, the, on a business because, just a little bit of a side note, this doesn't really affect the people who have a, a stable income. Like if you work in, for example, my brother who works at a school, uh, he gets his, his salary, like no matter what, like he gets his, his salary and that's it. Like he doesn't have to, he's not a business owner. So if one day the school, for example, closes, he still has to get paid because he's still there. Um, unless of course it shuts down completely, but I mean like, you know, One free day of work doesn't affect him, but one free day of work over here affects the whole earnings of that day. Entonces, nosotros, el tiempo de trabajo de la noche de la mayoría de los restaurantes es de las 4 o 5 de la tarde hasta las 12, 12, 1 de la mañana. For a lot of the businesses, like restaurants, like the one that my dad has, um, the, the time that they work is from around 4.30, 4, 4.30 in the afternoon until around 12 to 1 or 2 in the morning. In, and we're talking about, you know, early morning. But now, in este momento, nosotros tenemos que a las 10 de la noche cerrar los negocios, que es la hora pico del, de las ventas normalmente, porque siempre la gente sale a degustar eh, y a buscar qué servirse. Es una costumbre acá, ese, ese, esa movilización que hay de la gente. Pues, ¿no? um, but yeah, now, uh, They have to close their businesses at 10. Their restaurants, depending, uh, any business that stays open until late. And 10 o'clock is like the rush hour for people to go out to like eat, to hang out, to have fun, to, you know, to have a good time. Perfect. And, um, and to actually make good money because that's the time where people are, you know, are spending. Um, pero, por, pero eso ha hecho que la gente ya no salga a consumir porque... A las ocho y media, nueve, ya no hay nadie en la calle hoy en día. This has made it so that people, like, since they have to be at home by 10, they don't go out because then you see that by around eight or nine, like, the streets are already empty. They're Pero dead. Si te encuentran en la calle, tienes que pagar una multa de 450 dólares. Because if they find you on the streets, they're going to find you, like, a, a minimum wage, which is, like, 400, 425 to 450 dólares. Mm -hmm. Entonces, eso nos ha llegado a nosotros a complicar un poco más la existencia de uno tras que venimos eh, prácticamente sobreviviendo de un golpe tras otro en nuestra economía personal. So this has pretty much caused us a, a problem, a complication, a situation, since like problem after problem has just caused the, our situation here at home like to get worse. Like what we started off telling you from 2020 until now. Entonces, And ya no es un... No es un proceso de una sola situación, sino venimos con un proceso de tres años ya. It's not just one problem, it's not just one process, it's like a process that's been going on for three years, three years from 2020 to 2023, yeah, and process. going into 2024 también. Huh, continue. Depende de si viene o no el fenómeno del niño, si viene... We still have to face El Nino, we have to see what's going to happen with the presidential yes, elections. Yes. Y la, las cosas no van a cambiar de la noche a la mañana. And things aren't going to change from now until, Entonces, from today to tomorrow, like it's the, the, overnight. Un, siempre un, una transición de un gobierno es más o menos 18 meses por, por experiencia y por conocimiento. The transition of a government is generally uh, around 12 to 18 months. So it's a little bit complex. Um, wait, I didn't see who became a member. But um, Matt, thank you very much for becoming a member. I appreciate it. Um, Entonces, las expectativas no son inmediatas para nosotros. Entonces, the expectations aren't immediate for us. Entonces, hoy en día, lo que estamos es tratando de sobrevivir. So nowadays, what we're trying to do is, is to survive. Like, con los pocos recursos que se generan, con las pocas ventas que se realizan hoy en día. With the small amount of income that we get, with like the few... The few earnings like, that you get from the business, the few sales that my dad makes in the business, and of course, the little amount that we can give as, as, as family. Entonces, yo soy la cabeza de familia. Y He's como, the head of the house. Entonces, como cabeza de familia, siempre estoy tratando de buscar 
las alternativas para poder seguir adelante. Pues, ¿no? He's always looking for the alternatives, the solutions to try to get ahead. Uh -huh. Entonces, y eso es un, una breve explicación de la situación que actualmente vivimos los que estamos pasando estos momentos difíciles aquí, sobre todo en esta provincia que estamos afectados por el estado de excepción nuevamente. So yeah, right now we're on this, um, we're trying to survive, especially since now we're in the, uh, the state of emergency and, and the complications that that brings and that that's going to bring because, you know, esa es la otra parte de la explicación. Claro. Um, the fact that since there's these, these there's going to be 60 days. The state of emergency, ¿cuándo comenzó? Esta semana que pasó el... It started lunes, last week. El lunes. On Monday. Monday y termina el 20 de septiembre. And it ends the 20th of September. O sea, es una cosa ridícula. It's, it's ridiculous because it's 60 days where we have to pretty much like grind, I guess as, as, a, as a gaming term, but the, a better term would be we have to struggle to try to stay afloat because it's 60 days where he can't work to his maximum potential because the time where we have good business is closed off to us. It's closed off to a lot of people. We're, I'm very aware that it's not just us, it's, it's everyone who's here. But I communicate this situation to you to let you know our reality and the reality that a lot of people are facing right now and especially at hoping that maybe you can uh, help us out with this because it's a reality that we're, we're facing that we're going to face to a neck, to a, to a higher degree, to a higher level in these upcoming days. And it's, it's going to be very complicated uh, because the situation was already complicated. Like he was saying, it's from 2020. The situation has just not gotten better. Like it's not like more people are going out to spend money. It's actually less. It's not like more people are, are all of a sudden being uh, like getting benefits. You actually feel like you lose benefits at least being someone who lives here in Ecuador and has to, has to live with an, with an Ecuadorian salary. It's, it's very complex. That's why a lot of people who are from here have actually left Ecuador. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I, I think I talked about in one live stream before where I mentioned that I had read comments of people who were, who were leaving the country or who even before this whole crisis happened, when they foresaw that it was going to happen, they're already leaving. They're already getting out of here. It's um. Se it's, van por la inestabilidad política, por la inestabilidad económica y, y la social hoy en día, que es lo que más nos ha llegado a complicar. They leave due to the. Más todavía. They leave due to the political instability, the economic instability. It's just the instability in general because it affects them even more. So they're just people are just leaving. They don't see the the point in in staying here. At least. If you're an Ecuadorian who was uh, living here with an Ecuadorian salary, it just doesn't make sense anymore to, to stay here when you can find better opportunities somewhere else. Apparently, Apparently of course, because, claro. you know, nothing is guaranteed. Claro. Nosotros ya tuvimos la experiencia de vivir fuera y hay que igual ir a trabajar duro donde mm -hmm. uno quiera que uno vaya. Pero lo bueno es que haya esa posibilidad de trabajar duro y tener la recompensa. Sí, Acá... pero recompensa cuando el salario es bueno, cuando no, no. Entiendo. Yeah. Así. The, the reality, unfortunately. Como una that. profesión, no hay problema, así como la que yo tenía, pero mm -hmm. hay mucha gente que va es a lavar platos, limpieza, no es ofensa, ¿no? Pero eh, no es la expectativa que, que se, supuestamente con la que uno nace y quiere hacer, ¿me entiendes? En la vida. A lot of people leave the country with this, like, expectation, and um, I talked a little bit about this in my podcast episode, The Grass Being Greener on the Other Side. But people leave with this expectation, hoping that things will be better and they'll get like the, the most amazing opportunities somewhere else. And some do. But the reality of most of those people who leave is going to, for example, the States, washing dishes, um, and, and that's your life. And yeah, you earn more washing dishes over there than you do being a professional over here in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. um, as a teacher, I can, I can say definitely I would get more working washing dishes than just, um, than just that. Really quick, I, I happen to see the question. Can you tell everyone again where the curfew is? Um, it is in Esmeraldas, Durán, El Estado Santo Excepción, Domingo, Santo Domingo, and Manaví. So those are the places. Again, um, Santo Domingo, Durán, 
Eh, Esmeraldas and Manaví. Uh, so yeah, so that is what uh, what we're going through right now. Um, that is the the reality that some people hope to live. And washing dishes, I'm not saying washing dishes is a bad thing. If you have to do that to get out of the current situation you're in, we think that's great. Like you're finding an opportunity, but it's not the real. It's not the the expectation that people have when they leave here. Um, it just it's ironic how that somehow ends up being better than than you know just than working your actual profession that you studied your butt off for. Like he had a good job when he was in the States because he just happened to get lucky after years of working and working and working and getting into the construction business and, and for him going, it going well because he was a good worker. But not everyone has that same opportunity. Not everyone makes that same connection. Not everyone goes with the same desire to work hard to actually make a living. They just hope this is the best opportunity we're gonna have um, they have that expectation they're going to get the best thing, and it's just not that. Um, algo más que quieras decir. Uh, y eso son las, um, como te digo, apelando a la sensibilidad sería, ¿no? De, mm -hmm. No sé cómo lo quieras exponer ahí. Well, uh, so that is the, the situation that, um, that he wanted to, to talk about, that we're currently living through. Uh, Porque es una, algo para largo tiempo, no es para una... De una cosa momentánea, sino que esto viene una cadena de situaciones porque las obligaciones son las mismas las del mes pasado que las de este mes. Las obligaciones siguen siendo las mismas el próximo mes, o sea, ya nos tienen con la soga al cuello. Yeah, the complications really don't change. Um, like, the situation gets harder, but it's not like, it's not like anything changes for the better. Like, we still have to, like, pay for bills. We still have to... Uh, pay for food. We still have to. We have to live. We have to survive. That's why he said we've been, we've been pretty much surviving because there isn't really like an income. It's, it. I, I don't know if that would be the correct word for it, but it's just kind of like each month passes, and we have just enough to like get by, and it's not like oh we're where we have a little bit left over to save like for a rainy day. It's just getting by, and sometimes not even that because sometimes we have to ask for help to to get by. So it's, it's just been complicated. So I guess uh, you could say the, the, the thesis statement of all of this, it, not the thesis, I guess the, the conclusion is um, we would like to ask, and normally this isn't something that I would do um, or that, that we would do like I would do with, with the audience because I don't, I don't like um, having to, like, to ask because I feel like everyone has their, their difficulties in life. I realize that everyone who's here in the live stream today, everyone who's left a comment, the 82 people who are listening here today, which I appreciate you being here. Like I said, being here, commenting, liking the video, um, sharing it with friends, family, all of this is, is excellent help and I appreciate it a lot. The members who I mentioned earlier, um, everyone who's become a member, um, the donations that you guys have given, I appreciate it all. But this is probably the first time I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna ask and out of necessity, um, ask you, the audience, if you have the possibility in any way, the smallest amount, to, to help us out, a tiny donation, anything that you can, we'd appreciate it. Just out of the kindness of your heart, like it, it would help us out a lot to make the situation a little bit less complicated because the situation has been complicated and it's just been getting worse and, and I keep trying to find solutions to get out of the situation, trying to bide through it, through, through perseverance, working more hours, trying to get more teaching jobs, um, offering services here on YouTube. Um, I was also gonna say, if anyone needs any answers to questions, remember, you can always email me and we will answer. We will, I will do my best to answer as quickly as possible um, to a question. Uh, if they have a question for him, I will ask him and I will get the answer to you as quickly as possible. Um, I, I can't go through all of the questions as, like like that. It takes a while because believe it or not, I get a lot of comments, a lot of emails sometimes, and it's hard to get through them all. But uh, if there's any way that you can help, if you have any work available for us, I've received emails with some work that I'm gonna try to get through as well. We appreciate it. Any help is, is appreciated because uh, every little bit goes a long way. Um, that's why, again, I, I'd like to thank the people who donated today. Um, Evoke, of course. 
Uh, Daniel, I appreciate it. Uh, the $20 will definitely go a lot further here. Um, and Matt, you became a member and I appreciate that. Um, if you'd like to donate, if you'd like to help out, uh, you can go to buy me a coffee. The link is in the description. I'll try to copy and paste it here too. Um, whatever is donated from this stream that you, um, anything that you put in from this stream, I'll make sure it goes into uh, the help for uh, this month because for anyone who doesn't know, the money I get from buying me a coffee is for the channel. The money I get from YouTube, which isn't a lot, is for the channel. Everything that is here is for the channel or for the house. Whenever I have the possibility, I also, I just, well, not even I also, I have to because I'm living here, so I, I pay for things here at home as well. Um, but yeah, uh, any help is appreciated. Uh, so yeah. Um, anyways, uh, I'm going to go back to answering questions because, uh, like I said, that was just something that we wanted to communicate. If there's any possibility for you to help. Diles que es muy interesante saber lo que ellos recetan de la información que uno les da. Oh, and for him, he finds it interesting how you receive the information that we give you here about Ecuador. So, you know, you will see him in other live streams too. He's here today, but he's going to be in future live streams as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go and try to answer some more questions here. Um, uh, let's see here. Income in Ecuador's price is high in comparison. Uh, let me see here. Uh, well, we talked about this earlier, Kat, but uh, at least here with the election, unless the, the candidate actually fulfills their promises, I don't think anything is going to change. I think things are going to stay the same. Um, it really depends on, on what the candidate promises and what they decide to do. Uh, Russ, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your support. Um, let me see here. I think I went by a lot of questions that I probably didn't get a chance to answer. But if I haven't answered them, you can ask them again, and I'll try to answer. Um, uh, le, le philosophe, hello. Um, Russ, is this 10 p.m. curfew effective nationally? No, just the places that I mentioned a little while ago. Um, I think that's why Cynthia asked that question again. Sorry for answering late. The insecurity affects all the countries. The insecurity, the lack of feeling safe is like all national, around the country. That's yeah. national. That's Entonces, just something. No, dice, pero las están en estas, but the curfew is just... Estos estados que, que, Y una ciudad. Son tres estados y una ciudad. In these three states and this one city. Um, que nos rigen en este momento. Let's see here. Uh, uh, is it possible to get a citizenship by joining the army in Ecuador? ¿Es posible para verte ciudadano uniéndote a la, las Fuerzas Armadas? Pero no. Primero... Tienes que hacerte primero, sí, primero tienes que hacerte ciudadano para poder entrar a las Fuerzas Armadas. ¿no? Pero, <laughs> o sea, el proceso es como al revés. Que se case primero para... Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. By the way, I have to heart these comments because I appreciate the heck out of the support. Primero tiene que casarse para luego hacerse... Okay, so uh, first you have to be a citizen in Ecuador in order to join the army. No, acá hay un proceso que es desde los 18 años para arriba y la oportunidad de ingresar a las escuelas militares. Pero eso siendo ya alguien nacional, que... Nacional. Yeah, you got to be in Ecuador first and then afterwards you can do that. So, um, so like he was saying, first get married to an Ecuadorian, then you can come join the army. Although I'm not sure how many people really... No, army, yeah, la policía, porque el army es a los 18. Ah, yeah. well... A la policía sí podría ingresar. Well, to the police. Uh, Carlos, BP, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for the support. Carlos, do you think a specialized security business could be good in Ecuador, a private company offering security for several families altogether, uh, several blocks? Uh, ¿Crees que hay un, que tener una, una empresa de seguridad especializada sería bueno para Ecuador? Una empresa privada que ofrece seguridad para varias familias, um, varios, digamos, sectores de una ciudad. Sí, hay, eh, ese es un buen negocio. Lo que sucede es que hay que estar bien amarrado políticamente. O sea, aquel que no se amarra políticamente no está en nada. ¿me entiendes? It's a good business, but you have to be tied 
politically. Con los permisos que hay que sacar y todo eso. Because of the permissions that you have to get. Oh, yeah. So basically, it's a good business, but it's hard to start because there's a lot of things that you have to go through. Um, like a lot of hurdles or roadblocks. Um, elite Hamsters. Cute name. Um, the curfew is active for 60 days. So it started last week and it ends like September 20th. Aquí estamos hoy día 30. Empezó el lunes el 30, 22, el 23 empezó. Del 23 de julio al 20 de septiembre. So it started ju July, July 23rd. And it ends in September, uh, 20. September 20th. Um, how many days until the end of September? Yeah, pretty much the end of September. Um, what is your email? Never mind, I got it. Yeah, the email is in, my, is in, the, is in the description of the video. So if you want to email me, just uh, send me a, hit me up. Um, so sorry, Ecuador is such a beautiful country. I wish things were going better for you. Uh, oh, you deserve much better politics. Thank you, Kat. Uh, I really wish uh, this, it didn't have to be like this in, in general. Like, it's not just Ecuador. Like, the, the world is really, I feel like the world is on fire, <laughs> which reminded me of a meme. Uh, Lisa, wow, that is a lot. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it a ton. Um, damn, I appreciate it a lot. Uh, it's going to help out with the, with the situation. Uh, remember, all of the donations are going straight into, well, whatever YouTube doesn't take and whatever the, the, whatever Buy Me A Coffee doesn't take is going straight into helping the house. So I appreciate it. Um, let me see. As I was saying, I feel like the world is on fire. Like I, I've heard a lot of situations where, the, like for example, the States, everyone talks about the mass shootings and it, it's not fair. Like why would you want to live in a country with, with that level of, of danger? And um, I love the States, but... The problem is that today, Nosotros nos sentimos sin expectativa de que esto va a cambiar. Nowadays, we just don't feel expectations that this is going to happen. Yo converso, dile, con gente mayor. He talks to older people. Middle people and young people. He talks to people of all ages, basically. Sí. Y todos tienen el mismo concepto, que no se ve una, una expectativa, una luz, de que esto vaya a cambiar pronto. And everyone feels the same way, that they don't see like a light at the end of the tunnel. They don't see a solution to the problems that are happening. It's just, I mean, I feel like it just keeps going the same way. Thank you, Cynthia. Entonces, la, los pocos que somos gente honesta. The few people who are honest people. Productiva. And productive. No, somos los más olvidados por el gobierno. Are the ones that are most forgotten by the government. Porque piensan que nosotros somos autosustentables. Because they think that we can resolve things ourselves. Like, just think of what a business owner is. It's a person who makes their own money and solves things themselves, but... Porque somos como cualquier familia. Somos una familia normal. But we're like any other family, like... Ahora, es una locura. Es una locura. It's crazy. Es un electricio, un electrician bill, un electrician bill. Una, a bi an, an electric bill. Donde por cada dólar, tú tengas que pagar 32 centavos adicionales. For each dollar, you have to pay an extra 32 cents en, en impuestos. in taxes. Entonces, es una locura. It's crazy. It's crazy. Entonces, a eso se le agrega el costo de vida. Que hace you add to that the cost of living. After the COVID, after COVID el incremento era de un 5 o 10 percent the, the increase was around 5 to 10 percent. Después del COVID, Y de las manifestaciones que hubieron en el 2019 y en el 2020. Espera un segundo. Okay, there's the email. Uh, I, I know it's in the description, but... Um, okay. Después del, antes del COVID. Before y de, COVID. Y después del COVID, de las manifestaciones sociales que hubieron, el costo de vida se incrementó el 45% cada año. Before COVID and after COVID. And after the whole riots, the protests, the paros that happened here in the country, the cost of living went up to 45% per year. Before it was 5%. Now it went up to 45%. And with this crisis that we're living through due to the floodings and the excessive rain, casi el 100% en este último mes. Everything has increased this last month like by 100%. Así. 
Una libra de arroz que costaba 45 centavos hoy en día vale 80, 90 centavos. A pound of rice that used to cost 45 cents now costs like 80 to 90 cents. Libra de azúcar lo mismo. Right, uh, sugar, same thing. La cebolla. Casi Onions, $2.50 la libra. $2.50 a pound. Claro. Entonces, eh, eso hace que el presupuesto que uno lo tenía hace un mes atrás, that makes ya, you re the budget you had a month ago. ya reducido, hoy en día esté completamente quebrado. It's just like broken now. It's just gone up like completely. Claro, completely, exacto. Jamie, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Always trying to help. And here's the reality, like he's saying. Esa es, esa es la realidad de la, de la situación que se vive no solamente mi familia, sino muchas familias. Y eso que yo la defiendo en el poco tiempo que trabajo todos los días. That's the situation that not just our family, like I was saying earlier, it's not just us, that all families are going through. And it's something that he has to, to defend and well, we try to help as well but with the short amount of time that he works. And now even worse, because like I said before, he was working some days until like 12, 2 in the morning, because those are times that people actually go out and eat. People are out partying and like they stay out until 12, 1, 2 in the morning, 3 even. And since he's still out there selling food, people will go by. But right now with the, with the curfew, with the situation, with the state of emergency, you can't stay out later till 10. So how is he going to defend our situation if it's he works from around 4:30 until 10 it's 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 tough i talked a lot it makes me feel like i'm i'm talking again in the in the last video i made where i just like put everything out there but um but it's tough cuando um, tenga la oportunidad dile que tú vas a salir a hacer una toma de la ciudad que es como cuando está el covid oh yeah <laughs> if i when i get the chance when i'm not injured I'll go out and like do a recording of how the city looks at night when it, it looks like a ghost town, like in comparison to what, like it looks like COVID times. Be like before you would see people out and now it's just not the same. Um, but yeah, let me see. Hold up. I, I missed Lewis's comment earlier because I went too far down. Ah, uh, let me see here. Uh, so Lewis, hello, Lewis, how's it going? Uh, I hope you check. If you're not here anymore, I hope you, when you when you hear this, you check you, you enjoy the stream. Um, Russ, is it difficult to buy an existing business in Ecuador? Es difícil comprar un negocio existente en Ecuador. Primero hay que hacer una una uh, auditoría que se llama eso, o sea, contabilidad. Yo siempre le recomiendo a la gente que entiendo de negocio y cuando me piden una consulta le digo, mire. Si usted quiere comprar ese negocio, tiene que pasarse ahí 30 días para que día a día anotes, ¿ok? ¿Qué es, el, cuál es el movimiento de cada día en este mes que es temporada supuestamente alta? Después viene la temporada baja, enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo. O sea, comprar un negocio no es de comprarlo por comprarlo, sino hay que hacer investigar, investigar, hacer yo lo que le llamo la auditoría. una auditoría. Entonces, la auditoría es personal, no que me la haga otra persona. Entonces, regularmente hay gente que compra negocios por contabilidad, pero ya son negocios grandes establecidos donde circula mucho dinero y eso ya es otra historia. Pero un negocio pequeño comprarlo hoy en día eh, y yo le digo a la gente siempre primero Vaya y usted siéntese ahí. Vive la realidad. Y ve, vea la realidad. So, if it's a big, well-established business, I guess the, the first answer to the short answer, then it's, yeah, you already know what's coming in and what's going out. You know what the salary is in that business, what the income is. But if it's a smaller business that you want to buy, what he suggests is, you can buy it, but he suggests first go to that business and spend a day in, not a day, but spend 30 days, spend a month in that business. See what it's like, see what they're selling. And not just in the, in the low season, or in the high season, but in the low season too, because you can be there in what supposedly is the high season. And yeah, everything will look good in the 30 days. You'll see, you'll write down what they're earning, how, much, how many people are coming in, going out. And you have to do this yourself because you can't send someone to do this for you because it's not the same. You do it yourself, you check out how much it's earning and okay, and you see it in the high and the low season, and then you determine whether you want to buy it or not. 
that's what he recommends as a business owner and as someone who and at recommending it to someone who's looking to buy a business. But don't just buy it and like you know hope for the best. Una clienta, because you see a good day. Una clienta me hizo una consulta. One of his clients, one of his uh, customers, sí, asked him a question. Gonzalo, ¿qué le parece? Quiero poner una cafetería. They told him, "What do you think about setting up a coffee shop?" Entonces yo le digo, ¿usted ve esta, cómo está la economía? He told them, "Do you see how the economy is right now?" ¿Cuánto tienes para soportar el negocio? How much do you have to sustain the business? Twenty grand, me dijo, veinte mil dólares. And she said twenty grand. Okay. Wow, that's a lot. Le, okay, tú tienes veinte para empezar. O 20 para todo el negocio. No, para todo el negocio. Entonces no sirve. He, he asked her if she has 20 to start or 20 for the whole business. And she said to start. No, para todo el ah, negocio. Ah, no, for the whole business. Entonces le digo, no sirve. Porque so then it doesn't, he said that it doesn't work. Porque tú tienes que tener, le digo, un capital para el activo, un capital fijo en el banco y un capital circulante. O sea, tú necesitas 60 mil dólares para empezar ese negocio que tú quieras. He said you need at least $60,000 because you need one amount for like the business activo, when you start it. Es you need one. Se llama. Eso se llama That's uh, what he calls the, the active. I don't know. Es que no sé cómo se traduce no, eso. Por eso no lo, no lo digo así. El activo es lo que tú presentas. Okay. So this, this is the amount that you have like to present. El fijo the... banco. Lo que tú soportes en el banco que avalúe el negocio. Yeah, and then he has 20, and then you have to have 20000 in the bank to like support the business. Y el circulante lo que tú produces cada día. And, uh, and the money that circulates is the other 20,000. So that's like 60,000 he's saying that you need to start the business. And this person told him that she only had 20,000. So he said it doesn't work. Cuando nosotros empezamos el negocio, yo lo empecé con esa mentalidad. Pero se han dado todas estas circunstancias adversas en estos últimos tres años que nos han complicado un poco más la vida. He started off with that mentality, with that kind of structure. But with the complications that we had, we just kept going down. Like going back into the COVID era and what happened, like I had a certain amount of money like that I had saved in order to buy a car. COVID happened and I had to give that all up into Porque helping out in the house. Recuerda, yo como estudié economía, a algo puedo guiar y entender de, de negocio. Uh, BP, don't worry, Mark is okay. Just that he's probably out right now because normally uh, I think for him, I remember once he's, I got a message from him in the, like in the morning like around two in the morning, three in the morning, I was asleep, but I saw it next morning, I saw a message at two in the morning. So I think for him, that's like his more, his like, like 10 o'clock. And for me, that was like three. So he's probably out and about right now. He's okay. I asked him already and he's fine. The heat is okay. He's not suffering. In Canada, the whole country is on fire. Firefighters from so many, yeah. I saw that situation. Mm -hmm. I saw some news from Philip DeFranco and I was like, Canada is in a bad position right now. I hope everyone is well in Canada, by the way. Um, Christopher, wow, those numbers are crazy. Yes, they were. Uh, okay, question from Juicebox. Uh, how long did you live in the U.S. and why did your father leave the U.S. and return to Ecuador? Um, the easy answer uh, is the economy. So, la respuesta fácil es por qué no fuimos de... De, bueno, ¿por qué te viniste a, a Ecuador? Porque nos cogió la crisis financiera allá en los Estados Unidos, en el 2008. We got the financial crisis around uh, 2008, so... Y tú todos sané y terminó en el 2014. Entonces, las compañías en las que... And it ended in like 2014, Las compañías crisis. en las que trabajaba tu mamá, mi, mi, mi mamá, y eh, cerró en, se despidió empleados en el 2008. And the company that my mom was working at, they got rid of employees in around uh, 2008. Fuera de la compañía en el 2008. 200 employees uh, so were kicked out. Con, un en, he still had contracts uh, until later on, like 2010, because they, they had contracts, so he kept working. Pero el último proyecto, but when they gave the last project, el, they turned it in. El, el owner, el dueño de la compañía, dijo, ok, this is my last job, I closed the door de my company. So the owner closed the, the company after that. So Entonces, that was the, the complication with that. Mm -hmm. um, let me see here. For BP, Luis is Cuenca receiving the same? Oh, well, that was a question for Luis. I don't think he's here right now. Uh, Matt, what city do you live in? We are in Puerto Viejo, good sir. Um, 
like uh, Drive Dusty said. Uh, Russ, thanks. I keep I have my eye on a couple of small businesses and was wondering about the process. Uh, would that satisfy the requirement for permanent residency? Um, no creo. O sea, si quieres ser residente, comprar un pequeño negocio no te hace residente, o sí. No. Para residencia permanente, no. No. Tiene que sacar no. un permiso de estadía, nada más. You have y... to do the process uh, separately from that, Russ. Mm. Um, Juicebox C, 2008 was a very Pero bad time. Cuando yes, una, it was. Cuando una persona viene a invertir, es más fácil el proceso. The process is easier, according to, to my dad, if you're coming, if you do invest in, in like businesses and stuff Siempre like that. Siempre y cuando también con personas correctas. As long as you're doing it with, with good people, like not corruption, basically. Um, Christopher, on a fixed income, we are looking at leaving the U.S. for Mar de Plata, Argentina, or Arequipa, Peru. Mm -hmm. We are being gentrification out of here. Ecuador on USD, gentrified, uh, ruled it out. Ecuador on USD, ruled it out. Okay. Uh, I heard the situation in Argentina is bad because of the inflation. Porque Argentina también está pasando inflación. Oh, sí, la inflación es muy alta ahorita. Es... Inflation in Argentina is very high right now. So, you know, just be cautious. If you're going to do that, uh, be careful um, how you do it. Like, uh, Tengo amigos que, que están haciendo pasantías allá y, o sea, a ellos de aquí para allá no hay problema. For, he has friends who are doing uh, kind of an internship over there and... From here Porque to over there, it's not so bad. Se van becados por el gobierno. Ah, because they're going with scholarships from the government. O a su vez, sus padres los sustentan con el dólar ecuatoriano. Or their parents are, are helping them out with the, with the dollar that's here, Pero which is more powerful than si the Argentinian dollar. Si la gente va a trabajar allá, es imposible que se sustente. Con If someone goes to work over there, it's impossible to... Sustentarse. To live there, I guess, to sustain yourself. Mm. Hace poco uno de, tuvieron que hacer una devaluación casualmente para poder eh, tratar de equilibrar un poco, pero es terrible. Basically, the situation is very bad over there right now. No tengo nada contra los países sudamericanos, pero Venezuela, Argentina está próxima a ser el próximo Venezuela. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, ah, and he's saying that Argentina is on its way to be the next Venezuela. I, oh, ojalá que no. Por la, por la inflación. Because of the inflation. I, I hope not. In, la parte económica. In the economic sense. Economic. Mm -hmm. uh, Carlos Lima better than Argy. Yeah, you want to have more friends over there, Carlos. Um, that would be cool. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the situation. Uh, I would like to know if anyone has any questions, any other questions. Uh, remember, leave a like uh, if you're enjoying yourself here. Hello, Kenneth Cruz. Buenas. Hi. Uh, I hope you're doing well. We're here with Dad. Uh, Hello. Uh, for anyone who joined late or who hasn't been here, this is my dad, of course. Uh, we're here answering questions. We talked a little bit about the situation. Uh, hello, Naso the Nation, XXX. How's it going? Uh, buenas. Um, and also, uh, for anyone who donated again, we appreciate it. Uh, all the donations that we get from this video are going to go straight into trying to help the situation uh, here in our household because. We're having a hard time, and in the future, I, I, I'm not a, I don't, I don't know how to say it, not a greedy person either. I'm hoping that we can help not just our situation here, but people outside of here. I've actually been in talks with Don Shader to see what help we can give to the community because we, we worry about how things are going in the country, like seeing how the situation is, and uh, I've commented my situation to Don as well so that he knows what we're going through here. We, we, we know that while we have it bad, like over here, there are people who have it worse. I'm not here to, to play the pity card like, hey, we have it worse than anyone else. I am very aware that there are people living out on the streets. I'm very aware that there are people who have been having a very difficult time due to the floodings. And there's been donations that have been done with clothing and stuff. And I've been trying to see what clothing I don't need anymore that maybe I can give away. I've actually have already given a lot of clothing away that we just don't use anymore. But um, it's, we're trying to find a better way to help the community because it's not just us that's going, that's, that are having a bad time. We know a lot of people here in the country are having a hard time. But we'll talk more about this when I get together with Don and we'll make an announcement um, about what we plan to do. This is just a tiny heads up 
of the situation. By the way, if Don ever sees this, hello Don. And also, don't forget for everyone who's here, tomorrow Don Shader is having a live stream too. So stay tuned for that. ¿No se iba a decir algo? Sí, que la, la gente está preocupada porque no, no se... O sea, no hay confianza. Ah. No. People are worried because there's a, no... No hay confianza. No en, trust. En lo, en lo que se está viviendo. In what we're living through right que, now. Y en lo que va a venir. And what's going to come next. It's, it's pretty tough. Um, Matt Crandall, where is your dad originally from? ¿De dónde vienes originalmente? Eh, Nací en un pueblo pequeño. He was born in a small Porto village Velo. that's called Porto Velo, which is ironic because I, we live in Porto Viejo now. Porto Velo. Eh, Provincia de Lodo. De lo, eh, pro, pro, Provi in the, Provincia de Lodo. Uh, Um, let me see. A los 17 años, 10 meses de mi he left there when he was 16 years old, so, you know. Um, let me see, Louis. Hello, Louis. I'm glad to see that you're here. I thought you had left. Um, Russ, thanks. Uh, well, I couldn't read that. Juicebox, thank you very much. Uh, Juicebox dice, por favor, dile a tu padre que es un buen hombre y tiene una, bueno, supongo que buena familia, las cosas se pondrán mejor. Esa es la expectativa, lo, lo único que uno se encomienda a Dios todos los días pidiéndole que Él nos provea y nos dé las fuerzas y la voluntad para seguir adelante. That's the expectation uh, that He has, that things will be better. And um, always just hoping that uh, God will like, help us get through this situation. Um, Porque Él es nuestro guía, Él es el que nos, nos pone los caminos nos pone los momentos buenos y los momentos malos casualmente para hacernos más fuertes. So basically God gives us these trials, these complications to, to see if we can get through them. I guess it's the best way to summarize that. Um, really quick. Kenneth, greetings from Boston. I got back and forth here in Guayaquil. I generally like it, but it's sad to see the security. Yeah, it has been going really poorly. Do you think Ecuador needs a bukele? Uh, sorry, joined late. We did talk about that. Um, my dad personally says that it would be good to have someone who puts order, who like, you know, fixes things here. Sí, se necesita una persona. We need a person. Con la idea, el carácter y la personalidad que maneja este señor Najib Bukele. We need someone with these values, someone with like a specific personality that, and like, Discipline, I guess you could say, someone who will actually make things happen. Pero El Salvador, conozco bastante de la cultura salvadoreña por la que conviví con mucha gente centroamericana, topó fondo. El Salvador reached the point where they were like at the very bottom. Entonces, nadie quería vivir en El Salvador. No one wanted era to live el in El Salvador. País, hace seis años atrás era el país más peligroso de, del mundo. Six years ago, it was the most dangerous country in the world. Hoy en día, es uno de los países que te brinda mayor garantía para vivir porque no hay asesinatos, ni un asesinato. Nowadays, it's one of the best countries to live in because they can guarantee that you're, there's going to be like no assassination attempts. Pero hay un proceso. But there's a process. Eliminar a toda la política corrupta. Es Eliminate el... all the corrupt politics. Lo que hizo Lazo, él lo hizo cuando se sentó a la presidencia. What Lasso did with Huerta Cruzado was what Bukele did as soon as he became president. Yo deshago una, un congreso que era allá para poder dirigir bajo mi idea al país. Okay. We get rid of a... ¿Otra vez? Deshago. deshago el congreso que había We get rid of the congress that there is, that para exists. Para poder dirigir el país bajo mi idea. To be able to, to run the country with my idea. Okay. Entonces, con esa convicción, with that conviction, él pudo saltarse varios tropiezos que tenían por constitución. He was able to skip a lot of hurdles that normally the constitution would try to hold you back on. Entonces, eso le dio a él autonomía en las decisiones Yeah. That y, gave him autonomy in his decisions. Y poder reorganizar internamente los ministerios. And he was able to reorganize the ministries. Con gente profesional 
y mandando a policía, a gente proba, con muchos test que les hicieron, los mandó a profesionalizar en el extranjero. So with that, he was able to put in good people into power, not corrupt people, and put in people who like, and get people the training that they needed, the police force, from other places in the world, like the States, I think. Entonces, la prioridad de él fue salvaguardar los derechos humanos de la gente honesta y que produce. So his priority, Bukele's priority, was to safeguard the good people's, um, the good people's, I guess you could say, rights, the people, the honest people's rights, y el not... Que, y el que es delincuente, and if you're a delinquent, de la famosa banda Mara Salvatruchas, a tratarlos como delincuentes, como lo que son, como delincuentes. Si and tú, for any... Si tú no respetas los derechos humanos del de allá, yo no voy a respetar los tuyos. Así es simple. And for anyone who was a criminal, like, punish them as criminals. Like, if you're not going to respect good people's rights, then we're not going to, then you're not going to get respect. Like, if, in order to get respect, you have to give it. Entonces, todo el dinero que él recogía de la venta de drogas, incautaciones, de armas, de tráfico, de lo que sea, él ese dinero no se lo daba a la institución tal para que lo dirija, no. Él elaboraba un proyecto de vivienda, un proyecto de, de urbanizaciones, un proyecto de servicios para el pueblo con ese dinero que era capturado a los delincuentes. So with the money that he got, like that he got from the, from the government, he didn't send it into institutions for them to divide it. What he did was he created a plan and with that plan, he, uh, he, he I guess you could say, he used it to, to build certain projects and he actually, like, I guess you could say he was very organized Proyectos in that sense. Que la población, que They were projects that the population needed. And that has given him this credibility uh, that he has today. Um, finally, solid moral values, interesting responses from your dad. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, BPE question, is there slowing people moving to Ecuador or leaving Ecuador? Um, I mean, like he said, there are people who are leaving because they see what the situation is and they're tired of it. Um, but I can't really say that there's really like slowing people coming because we always get these comments. Like, I, I know a lot of people, I have, a, I have groups where people are just coming and going from Ecuador, but like, you know, uh, people to travel, people to visit. So really, um, hard to say uh, exactly what the numbers are. I haven't really seen it slowing down. The people who are doing the research are worried, but they're not exactly like overpowering the people who are, who are dead set on coming to Ecuador. O sea, yo no veo que hay personas, o sea, no veo que hay un, una declinación en la cantidad de personas que vienen a vivir acá en Ecuador. O sea, lo que veo es que sí hay más personas nativas queriendo Querido. irse. Lo que pasa que la persona que llega al Ecuador es una persona que llega con una estabilidad, ya, persona mayor, retirada, que ya tiene un sustento. So yeah, the people who come here, they already have a stability. So like, basically, like I've said before, like, they don't have the worries that the per people who, who live here, yeah. that they have. En, en cambio, la gente que tiene que trabajar y producir, y, you, si no hay, y si no hay trabajo, bien complicada la cosa. For the people here who have to work, who have to survive, like, and if there's no work, and if the pay is just pathetic, um, it, it just doesn't work. So people are leaving to try to get better opportunities. Mm -hmm. But for people coming, I mean, it's just normal. Um, if you have a good economic stability, then you're gonna come, you're gonna be fine. Um, Magnus, hello. Uh, hola, Ace and Papa, just joined. Love your family and love what you do. Thank you very much, Magnus. Uh, I guess I missed a lot. Uh, definitely check it out. Definitely my favorite Swede. I think I don't know how many people from Sweden watch uh, our videos. I need to check the the infograph, the not the infograph, the graphs to see how many there are. But I think you're like one of the only people from Sweden who check us out. Um, so I appreciate it, Magnus. Um, ¿Y vas a decir? Sí, que la historia que preguntaba en antes el caballero de dónde soy. Tengo la historia cómo llego a Guayaquil. Okay. Ah, he has a whole story. Eso lo dejamos mejor para un día que hagamos un video acerca de eso. We'll leave a whole story. Like, I'm going to leave this whole, I'm going to have a whole segment of videos 
where my dad's going to talk a lot about the history of like his situation here in Ecuador and the things he lived through, as well as um, some of the very his important historic parts of the country. It's going to be mainly in Spanish if we can't translate it, but I will have subtitles. And if I see that it's not something that, it's just that there's a complication with putting Spanish videos on the channel. YouTube doesn't like that, especially if the channel is mainly English. So it might be something that I'll reserve um, as unlisted videos, maybe for like memberships and stuff like that. But you'll hear a lot of interesting stories about that in the future. And I'll see if I can make it so that everyone can check it out. It's just, I'm worried about how YouTube is going to punish the channel for that because that's just uh, the complications of YouTube. Um, has there ever been a problem with vaccinators in your area? Aquí, o sea, aquí, aquí, si hay vacunas, pues por aquí. Claro. Aquí en el aeropuerto. Ah, en el aeropuerto. Yo me puse la del flu el otro día en el... No, esa no, las la, la, la vacunas, pues. Ah, sí. Ah, la vacuna. De los locos, pues, de los yacareatos. Ah, no, yo pensé que sí la vacuna, la del COVID. No, no, no. eso no. No, por este lado, no. Aquí no, pero sí en la ciudad. Ah, en la ciudad sí hay. En la ciudad, sí. En la ciudad, sí, hay uh, the, the, you know, the criminals doing the vaccination. Pero It's es just, por las zonas periféricas. Digamos. It's more like on the outside parts outside of the city. Part, sí. So, not really so much here in like the... Manta está más complicado con eso. Manta seems to have more complications than that, which is weird because I heard that they didn't. Um, they have, was it vaccinate? No, they have more problems with the drug trafficking. I don't know. That's uh, some comments that I got from es someone puerto. in Manta. En Manta es fácil deducirlo, es un puerto. Well, Manta, because it's a port, it's easier to see that. But anyways, uh, going on. Uh, right now, it is currently 4.01. Uh, Cynthia, I love Don Shader. Yes. He has the best no BS content. Don't forget, he has a live stream tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be there too. Well, not there physically, but I'm going to be in the chat. Uh, I had to leave for a brief time. Did you answer the question of our friend Mark? Yes, Mark is okay. Um, Mark is having fun in, in Spain. He's probably right now out and about, probably at the beach. <laughs> um, it's 4.55 here in Ontario, Canada. So we are almost an hour behind, I think, from what it looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, same, but don't have daylight savings time. Yes, we don't have daylight savings. Uh, right now, it is 4.01, like I said. Um, are there more vac vac no, vacancies, places to rent in Ecuador? Um, I haven't gone out and checked this myself. Um, hay bastantes lugares para arrendar aquí en Ecuador. Ah, sí, hay bastante. Sí, hay. Sí, hay bastante gente emigrado. Ah, oh, bueno, yeah, because people are leaving, so yeah, there's a lot of places. Está cheap ahorita, está barata la renta. So rent is cheap right now. Um, let's see here. I have a friend who just said Gabamba, yeah. Uh, Gabamba. Sí, tiene una amistad que se... No, solo que Cindy está preguntando de la hora, porque una amistad se fue a Vilcabamba. Oh, yeah, sí, ella es la misma hora acá. Mm -hmm. It's the same time. Um, Daniel, so do you live in or close to the downtown area? Close. close. Estamos cerca del downtown. Sí. So we're close. Not in the downtown area, but we're close. Pero es una zona rosa, dile esto, que le llaman zona rosa, le llamaban antes a esto. They call it here like pink zone, <laughs> Zona Rosa, but it's like the nice part of the city. Por eso todos los trabajos son en la noche, los That's why all the work is in is at night. Nighttime. It's the whole business zones that I've talked about also in uh, in my videos, where it becomes more expensive here as well. It's not as nice as you think because, ironically enough, there have been crimes that happen here as well, but. Um, I don't, sometimes that's why I don't understand the difference between the, the whole pink zone. It's just like a uh, nicer area, looks nicer. It, okay, I guess the main difference is it's not like where in the outside of the city where you have like the streets that are never fixed. Here you actually have a little bit better streets um, than other streets outside in the outskirts. Um, Ace, you should be, I wish I could go to Manta. I asked Don, but he said, there's too much problems, complications with getting me to Manta with my injury. Uh, Maria Janet, saludos amigo Ace. Hello, Maria Janet. Uh, muchas bendiciones, excelente información. Gracias, Maria Janet. Espero que te encuentres bien. Uh, Christopher, any thoughts on Amelia and JP's information? Uh, recently discovered them. I mean, from a personal standpoint, I think every perspective is important. Uh, I give, I like to say that I give more realistic perspectives because I talk about the bad things 
that I feel like Amelia and JP don't always talk about. Not to say that they don't mention some bad things, but I feel like they omit it more, kind of like in a business perspective. At least that's what I've heard and from what I understand. I respect their grind, I respect what they do. I just don't think that they always, um, they always mention these kind of niche things. Maybe they don't know about them. I, I honestly don't know. Like, um, it's, it's hard to say. But I definitely recommend you check them out because they have a perspective. We have a perspective. Don Shader has a perspective. Um, uh, Flynn's on the Fly have a perspective. Uh, just some, some channels. Everyone has a perspective. And I think it's important to look at all the perspectives and then come to a conclusion so that way you can make a decision. Um, let me see here. I, I remember in one of your videos, you said your grandma built the wall outside your window to rent the buildings. Are the buildings homes, businesses, or warehouses? It's just like, a, like imagine a, a house that has like these extra buildings on the outside, like other mini houses. Um, so it's like, like that's the, the situation with, with our buildings over here. It's just like um, a normal house and smaller, not really houses, like rooms, Swing, room, suites. suites, if you want to call them, that people can, can live in and rent. Um, let's see here. Uh, I prefer Don Shader to Amelia and JP, more honest information. Uh, like I said, perspective. I don't want to call anyone out, but I do feel like uh, they, they might not know everything that's happening in the country, or they just don't want to talk about it, maybe because of a business uh, benefit? I can't say because I don't know what goes on behind the scenes with them. Um, not a problem, Christopher. Uh, Eduardo, is it on your mind to leave Ecuador with the current situations? Let me ask this in a different way. Would we leave Ecuador if we had the possibility to leave Ecuador? ¿Tú qué opinas acerca de eso? Si hubiera la posibilidad de irse, uh, digamos, a Estados Unidos y, y tener un trabajo ya yeah, allá, yeah, te irías. Yeah, he would leave. If he had a job, like, guaranteed going to the States, he would leave. No importa la edad. Lo importante es lo que tengo acá. <laughs> I guess the age doesn't matter. It's, what, it's over here. Um, if I had a good opportunity, uh, I might go. Soy chef, parrillero, tengo la plomería. I personally want to go to Japan. Just a visit, though. Because I hear it's pretty difficult living over there. Um, Pavel, hello. Uh, hola, tengo una pregunta. ¿Es Netflix popular en Ecuador a uh, toda Latinoamérica? Hello from Poland. Hello sí. again. Me encanta Ecuador y toda cultura Latinoamérica. Yeah, Netflix, Netflix, Disney Plus, um, all these streaming services. Uh, the only problem that I don't like is that they're nerfed. Um, uh, they're not as, as good as in other countries because sometimes there's some things that uh, they aren't shown on the Netflix over here. At least that's what I've heard. That's why a lot of people opt to get a VPN, or there's just a lot of pirating, so that you can check everything out. Um, let me see here. Uh, Amelia and JP are all about making the income. Maybe. Um, say, is, isn't so a curfew for the criminals? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that, because the sentence is structured kind of strange. But um, the, the curfew is for everyone. The curfew, el, el, el pa, no el paro, el, la, el estado de excepción eh, y, y todo lo que viene es para todos, lamentablemente. O sea, todos estamos en estado de excepción. O sea, todos los que están en las cuatro secciones que están. Cuatro, o sea, no es solo para los criminales, es para... No, like, no, everyone estado, is affected by it. El estado de excepción es casualmente para evitar que salgan los criminales. It's to try to avoid criminals doing es, anything, es, but es, everyone is affected es, by no it. Si no matan en la noche, matan en el día. O sea, es una locura. That's the funny thing, because... Stopping them from going out at night just feels like they're just going to go out during the day, which is uh, not cool. <laughs> um, now you have to fear the day instead of the nighttime. Um, I feel they are mostly in it for the money also. I'm not sure, Cynthia. Thanks, Juicebox. Surprise face from Kenneth. Um, maybe because of the whole moving to the States. Uh, there are a lot of things I want to do in the States, but it's just complex. Um, if you are a fan... If you have a family member, it's easier to overstay uh, here in New York. Probably. Um, in any place, honestly. Paul, when I was there, I found it to be half 
a half curfew. Only bars were closed, but restaurants were open. Can you still walk the streets? Uh, según Paul, cuando él estuvo aquí, quizás no ahorita. I don't know if that was now. Uh, él vio como una mitad eh, esta excepción, donde él veía que los bares estaban cerrados, pero los restaurantes estaban abiertos. Eso fue cuando había, ¿cómo se llama esto? Ley seca, creo. Ley seca. That's a different thing. It's uh, something called the dry law. Eso solamente law. se hace cuando hay las votaciones. That's during the, the, the election period, mm -hmm. where everything else can Tres be open, días. but um, you can't, there's no bars open. Tres días. Uh, Pat, I don't know if you're asking por qué está pasando, like why is this situation happening? It's just dangerous over here. Um, the president basically is trying to stop everything by using the curfew. Um, the toque de queda, the esta excepción. So that's his solution to the problem, which everyone agrees is not a good solution. So no solución a nada. Doesn't solve anything, like my dad said. Uh, elite hamsters, eh, pregunta si supongamos, eh, ahorita que hay el toque de queda, si alguien está en el aeropuerto a la una de la mañana porque viene de otro país, ¿qué sucede? ¿Se queda atrapado en el aeropuerto hasta el día siguiente o...? No, se puede movilizar porque tiene... Mm, tiene algo que lo ampare. Ok. Tiene you basically pas have like pasaje, a... El avión llegó a tal hora. O sea, los taxis por compañía pueden trabajar bajo llamada. So basically, uh, there's like a special permission in that case if you're like at the airport because you have proof that you're not just out on the streets to, to mess around. You have actual evidence that, hey, I'm out on the streets because I'm, I just got here. So... You need that special permission. De todas las ciudades que hay estado de excepción, solamente Manta es la única que tiene aeropuerto. Mm -hmm. So the only city right now that would be affected by something like that is Manta because Manta is part of the, the cities that are in this uh, curfew. Um, let me see, Daniel, uh, Amelia and JP may now, maybe now because they are more incorporated, but when they first started, yeah, I heard that a lot of their videos at the beginning were more about their travels. I actually looked back on some of them and they were more about that. But little by little, I feel like they've started doing like, like different kinds of content, which I guess every creator grows in different ways. And I think that's fine. Um, Kenneth, yes, we used to live in Florida. Nosotros vivimos en Florida, pues antes. We were in Florida. Uh, now we're here in, in Ecuador. Um, Paul K, where are, it's good to check everyone out and keep an open mind. Exactly, Cynthia. Uh, SRB, hello. Uh, do you see these curfews continuing up to December? Uh, well, going back to, by the way, Florida. I miss Florida. Um, do you see these curfews continuing up to December? Is this curfew countrywide? We've answered this question a few times, um, but basically the curfew is only until September the 20th, um, and it is not countrywide. It is only in four parts of the country, uh, Santo Domingo, eh, Esmeraldas, Manabí and Durán. So that Durán is a city, but the other places are states. States, pretty much. Pro Provincia. Provinces. Um, I also follow a couple of Incovamba. Yeah, Jolie Farms. I've seen them as well. I hope they're doing well. Um, time to lock up everything, like in El Salvador. That's what people want. Some people. Is Guayaquil affected by the curfew as of right now? Guayaquil, no, solo Duran. It's only Duran. Yeah. Duran is the only one that has the, Mas, the curfew. Una problemática. It's already, no, no, o sea, si ellos tienen toque de queda. No es Guayaquil, solo no, es Duran. Solo Durán. Only Duran. Um, Guayaquil no lo pusieron porque estaban de fiestas. <laughs> uh, apparently they weren't, they didn't have the, the, the curfew because of they're like in a uh, celebration right now, festivities. Party. Duran, Manaví, Sí, está bien. Espera un segundo. Those are the four places. Uh, so my dad's going to leave right now because he's going to start getting ready to go uh, downstairs. And yeah, because of the parties. Uh, so, va, igual para que te despidas. Hola, y placer siempre. Eh, estar en, en diálogo con mi hijo y con ustedes y de antemano muchísimas gracias por la ayuda y, y porque siempre están ahí con mi hijo. Okay? Thank you very much, everybody. Okay? So, uh, thank you for uh, being here, of course, uh, for the support, for having these conversations with me, with us. Um, he, he appreciates you guys having a conversation with, with us and uh, 
Yeah, uh, the, thanks for the support. We appreciate it. Uh, I'm still going to stay here for a while. Próximamente estaremos nuevamente por aquí para contarle una historia por lo menos para que agradar a hacerles eh, agradable la tarde, noche o, o madrugada donde se encuentren en cualquier parte del mundo, ¿ok? Thank you very much, guys. So he'll be back to tell more stories later on. I'm still going to be here for a little while longer, so... Um, uh, Anana, hello. Uh, and thank you very much to everyone else who, who, said, who said hi and bye. Um, el adios and gracias. I'll make sure to let him see this. In the, let me take a picture of these comments right now so he can see them uh, a little bit later on. Um, so I'm still here. Uh, Maybe I'm not the best company. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But um, I'm still here. So uh, if you guys have any questions for me, uh, please uh, shoot rapid fire. Let me know. Uh, I'll still be here for a little while longer. I think we can stay until maybe um, another 15 minutes or until 5. Um, but yeah, I'm here. Uh, wow, I feel like the camera got angled a lot. Let me see here. Okay, uh, I do this because I remembered uh, Tiptoe, which is a, she's a YouTuber who does uh, ASMR, and I love her channel, her content, um, and I remember once she did something, like, and I was like, and I just remembered it, and I was like, oh, Tiptoe, haha. <laughs> um, el placer es mío, abrazos a tu papá, thank you, Carlos, que Dios los bendiga, thank you, Pat, um, Kenneth, uh, appre appreciate it, and E. I keep feeling like I read Evilk or Eva, Evik, but thank you as well. Gracias. Um, Luis, saludos, thank you. Uh, saludos a todos ustedes as well. Um, adios, Don. Uh, thank you, Maria Janet. Glad to see you still here. Gracias por estar aquí todavía. Um, buenas tardes, buenas noches. We enjoy your company. Thank you, BP. Wish him success at work today. Let me turn off the other microphone really quick. I just realized I had both of them on still. Um, I hope this one's not dying. Um, Amelia and JP are not traveling much right now because their dogs, oh man. I hope everything is good with, with their dogs. So sometimes I know, um, and I, I've seen cases where people's dogs, like they, they die and it's like they get really sad. And uh, it's, I, I just worry because I have a dog too. Uh, uh, Daniel, he's going to be more popular on his channel. Dang it, I knew it. Now he's the celebrity. <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't mind. Uh, he's always fun to talk to. He makes more jokes than I do. I'm kind of like, I get really serious and then I just get kind of like focused on, on just like saying things. Um, uh, and answering questions more than anything. Um, Let's see here. Ace, have you been to other South American countries? I have not. My brother had the chance to go to Taiwan, which is not South American, but he actually got to go somewhere else. But I, my experiences are mainly Ecuador and the United States. The good thing is I have so many friends from here who are from other parts of the country and the world that I get a lot of information about everything that's going on here. Sometimes it's overwhelming because, like I mentioned in my uh, accepting the reality video, like. Like, I hear the things that happen to the families of others in, um, in, another, in, another, uh, in another country. And it's, it's kind of saddening because, or in another city, because it, it's like your family. And, and it's, it's hard to, to feel safe when you're worried about your family or your friends who are in a different part of the country. So it's just a lot of things that go into my thoughts there. Um, bespoke, love your dad. Thank you very much. Okay, fine. I'll elevate my foot. Ugh. I mean, I, I, I was told I only had to elevate it for three days, so that's why I'm kind of like, I, I'll have it most of the time elevated like this, like around here, but um, other times I'll just be like having it in a neutral position, like obviously not stepping on it, but like just like neutral, kind of like hanging, dangling. Um, Kenneth, do you have a video on this? Just curious what brought you to Ecuador, specifically Puerto Viejo. No, I do plan on making a whole story time of how I got here and how everything happened. 
It's just a video that I'm waiting to make because like I said before, YouTube punishes you a lot for content that doesn't seem to be something that your audience wants to watch. Um, so I always, what I focus on making is content about what's happening in Ecuador, maybe questions that people have, uh, things that I feel are very, very, very like recently happening. Uh, Laura, hello. Thank you very much for becoming a member. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, for anyone else who would like to become a member, I appreciate your support. Um, let me continue with uh, the questions. The oldest one is dying. She, ah, oh, man, Daniel, no. <sighs> I, I hope that Amelia and JP are okay because I, I know the love that a lot of people have for the animals is like the love you have for your child. I mean, I love my parents. They're not my children, but they're my parents. And it's like, like I can imagine something bad happening to them and it hurts me just thinking about it. So like having a, mat, having a, a pet, like and something happening there, like I, I, I worry about what could happen to my dog. Sometimes I'm like, it, would it be better to, to, to send him to someone else and like not have to worry about him, something happen? But then I'm like sad because he's my dog. I'm not even gonna think about that one. <laughs> um, okay, Cynthia, I can't believe Jolie Farms has so few subscribers and also you. I will start to plug your videos. I appreciate it, Cynthia. Uh, just remember that also um, when sharing videos, um, or the channel, if people subscribe to the channel and they don't watch the videos, YouTube punishes that too because it feels like artificial subscribers. So I, that's why I just make content and I, I really hope that it reaches the people that, that really need to see it. Um, and everyone joins the community and hopefully you have a good time here because I can also understand that there are people who don't like me, people who maybe see me talking and they're like, what's this kid talking about? And I, I get that, I get that because, um, you know, everyone has different ways of viewing things, but if my channel gives you value, if it helps you out and you feel like it would be good for others, I appreciate the share. Like I said, comment, subscribe, like, uh, everything helps me out. Um, if you become a member, that's next level and I appreciate it um, because that just goes to help me make more videos. Maybe some, I, I don't know, um, I don't know what everyone thinks, of course. But everything I get from YouTube, which isn't a lot, except for when, I, when people help with donations, like that helps me out more. I use it more for the house to try to help out here. Um, we had a deficit and I, I gave money to, I gave the money that I got from the channel to my parents, like here, I got some extra money, you guys can have it. Like just make sure the house is okay. Um, and some of it I'll save because I know that there's gonna be a rainy day. Like we just talked about, there's gonna be 60 days where salary we're not going to get the same income i have my foot that is messed up so i can't even like work to my full potential because i have to pay for the taxi my not the taxi but the person who's picking me up who's a worker at the academy who's like my taxi right now for now i have to pay him um i was so grateful yesterday that he that because he's been helping me out this whole month i even gave him a little bit extra to go buy some food so it was like you know it, it's just it's just that, like these things that you don't expect to happen. So I like to be prepared for it. I'm very like, I like to have money for a rainy day and everything that I do spend, like I try to spend on new gear. Right now I'm trying to find a way because there's gonna be this, um, I got, don't, uh, hello Julie, hi. Um, I got this, um, what do you call it? The, the, ah, microphone. I got a donation for a microphone, which I, I, I had promised I was gonna talk about uh, from Liam Roche, I think his name is, or Roche, I'm not sure, I'm, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but um, I got a donation for the microphone. I just can't get it over here yet because I have to go through the courier service or I have to see if someone can bring it because the donation was, a, was exactly for the mic because on, um, on Buy Me A Coffee, I have this wish list where if you want, like you can donate for a specific item and I will buy that item if I have the money, if I get the donation values for it. I just don't know how to get it over here. So that money is, is for that. And there's also this fund that I'm saving up to, when I'm not injured, to make a trip to a different city and record in that city and give information about that city. But that'll be after I'm not injured, of course. And we'll see how that works. Take it easy, Pat. Peace and love, and uh, pasalo bien. So yeah, uh, either way, Cynthia, I appreciate it. Just remember, try, 
when it, when you share the videos, um, uh, just ask the person that, what, that to watch the content. And if they enjoy it, then I appreciate it. Um, Magnus, I'll, I'll respond to this in a bit. Living, loving abroad. Hello. Uh, hello from Puerto Viejo. Um, so let me continue with the, um, with the comments from here. Jay Jensen, Jay, who's a supporter and buy me a coffee. I appreciate it always, man. Uh, hey, do you think overdubbing the audio in addition to or in place of captioning might resolve your concerns about YouTube's reaction to bilingual content? It really depends on the viewer because there are people who by default, the videos, they have it set to, to no dubs, no captions, no nothing. Um, and I usually use YouTube's dubbing, their, no, their subtitling options to make the process a tiny bit easier. Um, so that's how I do it. But I could, I could like write the actual subtitles in the video through my editing, but I will tell you now that that, that is a very difficult process. Very, very, very difficult process when it comes to subtitling like sentence by sentence a video because it's it's just very complicated there's an app that you can buy download and pay a monthly subscription that'll subtitle videos but it's like it's more like for shorts so i don't know if it would work well for this but there are apps you can buy for subtitling that makes it a little bit easier but I don't know if those apps auto translate because that's what I want to avoid. If the translation is bad, I'm gonna feel bad that people aren't getting the correct information. So that's why whenever YouTube makes a subtitle, like it makes subtitles, I go into it and I read through the subtitles, I fix it, and then I, that's why sometimes when I'm reading through the subtitles, it'll say in Cebu Yedo, and it's actually en cebollado because I know what Encebollado is written like and the translator doesn't translate it well. So that's why I had to go in and, and fix it. Um, but in order for me to manually put subtitles, it would probably mean each video, if it takes me, let's just assume, um, a video takes me 12 hours to edit. If I add subtitles, it'll probably take me 24 hours, double the time because of how long I have to go in and time the subtitles correctly. Maybe it's an exaggeration to say 24, maybe it's just 0.5, so it would be 18 hours, but it would still increase the amount of time that it would take to sub. And it depends on the length of the video as well. Um, I just saw a comment uh, from Christopher. Uh, Hello to your granddaughter. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, Jacqueline or Jacelyn. But hello, uh, buenas, I hope you are doing well. Espero que estés bien. Uh, going back to the other comments that we were having up here. Um, so Jay, it might help a little bit if I like, I, in each video that the main channel videos, I do put various uh, caption options, but adding the actual subtitles is very complicated. So I could try but I can't guarantee what the success rate would be because some people also, when they see too much words, they, um, how do you call that? They get distracted. That's why even with my edits, some people feel like it's distracting. For a video that I don't need to edit a lot, like maybe not a lot of movement, it would, I could probably do the subtitles. But if it's just, like if it's adding subtitles and making the whole moving, the scene and adding in the animations, that would be a very difficult video to, to make. Um, Christopher agrees, Cynthia, A should have way more subscribers. I appreciate the support. Let's see, we're trying to reach 10K subscribers for December. Let's do it. Um, Cynthia, you and your dad have such a beautiful relationship. It's great to see, thank you very much. Uh, my dad always says that we get along like friends because he had a different relationship with his dad, where his dad, he would never get to talk to him in person. They, he would, his dad would send out like communications through the door. So it's, it's very different. And he felt like he didn't want to have the same situation for us. Um, by the way, uh, NZ, thank you very much for becoming a member. I appreciate the support. Um, I hope you're here for the long run. <laughs> 
Um, let's see here. Kenneth, not a problem. Uh, Daniel, YouTube probably gets picky because their captioning is lousy. That's why I have to go in and always edit their captions. The English captions and the Spanish captions are the ones that I can edit the best. The rest, I really just try to hope that since my captions, the original captions are good, that YouTube will do a good job in translating them into the other languages. So if the languages aren't perfect and you're from a country that's, that speaks German, for example, or that speaks, um, I don't know, Korean, I apologize that the translations aren't the best. It's not, I'm not trying to do it on purpose. I just, I don't speak those languages natively, so I, I can't be the one to fix that. And I can't hire someone because there's just no money for that. Um, I like Jolie Farms also, Chris and Mike, Abundant Living. Um, I've, I, I've heard of Chris and Mike. Mili and JP have a good episode, generally don't follow them anymore. I like channels that is open and true. Um, honestly, if you're here and you like uh, how I am, I appreciate your support. Um, there are people who, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there are people who don't like uh, what I do because maybe they just don't like me being real um, because it doesn't, it's not beneficial for them. But I did try to get in touch with Amelia and JP once, but they didn't reply, so I was just kind of sad. Um, Ola from Salinas again. Uh, I, had, I had read that earlier when it came on screen. Uh, Lisa, all right, <laughs> living, loving abroad. Hey, thanks you guys for answering my questions so quickly. Uh, I thank them also for helping you out. Uh, Magnus, I try to watch all your videos and Don's videos. If I watch, I always click the light and sometimes like and sometimes comment. Uh, we appreciate your support. Uh, Living and Loving Abroad, let me show you the, the, uh, the software that I use because I edit on my phone. A lot of people don't believe me, but I actually do all my editing uh, on my phone. Uh, not on this one, on the one that I'm using for the live stream right now. This phone is just for communication, and I really should have another number, a business number, but I don't because I can't afford another plan. Um, wouldn't be convenient. But yeah, this is the phone. This is the app. This app is called VLLO. I am not sponsored by them in any way, but this app, um, I paid for the full version because you can pay for it once and you have it forever, and I'm really good at editing my videos on my phone. So I use my phone to edit. This phone is already old, um, but it still serves a purpose to be able to communicate uh, through WhatsApp, um, be able to check out certain things and not drain the battery of this phone because I don't know if everyone knows, but phones have a certain battery life. And with video making, the battery life drains really quickly. Like this phone I think is at around 83% battery life. Um, and this one is like around 70 but because they share the burden. If they only one phone had to do it, it would be complicated. Um, and I've had this phone since it came out, which was like before COVID. Um, so that's the only reason why I even can have these two phones. Um, and one is more for business anyways. So yeah. I'm gonna write the name of the app so that you guys know what it is. Uh, I have nothing to hide here. Uh, so if you ever want to download it and try it yourself, uh, go ahead. And um, Magnus, don't worry about it. I'm glad that you, you check out the videos and I appreciate it because, um, like I said before, watching, subscribing, commenting, liking, that helps me out a lot. Um, Elizabeth, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'd like to share my opinions and thoughts. Um, I just hope that they're received the best way um, and that they help. More than anything that they help, because I know I'm not gonna, like I said, not everyone's gonna like what I say, but as long as it's informative and useful and sometimes entertaining, because I try to use the edits um, and I try to be funny, but um, as long as it helps, that's what matters. Um, and yeah. Uh, living and loving abroad, uh, as long as I can get the vids done, really, that's what matters. Let me see, what app do you get junk calls or inquiries, Ren? Yes, yes I do. Uh, I've gotten so many spam calls, but the ones that I dislike the most, and it's not to say hate, are the calls and the messages from Movistar, from Claro, because those two companies will bother you a lot. 
And I don't have a credit card because I, I have no need for one in the sense that I know that that's just a burden on your financing. I would probably be more poor if I had a credit card, um, poorer, but um, not even poor. I would just not have as, I'd had less funds because I, when you use a credit card, it just drains your money. But when you get a credit card here, my friend, my best friend told me about this. When he got his credit card, he just gets tons of calls. Like he, as soon as he got the credit card, calls, 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 offering more things for him. And I was like, mm. for me on WhatsApp, sometimes I'll get these, these messages. Um, someone telling me, hey, I have work. Um, it pays this much an hour. You need no experience. Uh, work from home and I'm like what kind of scam is this because it is a scam because it's not just one message from one number I've gotten it from different numbers. I get messages from Movistar from Claro uh, Recently, I've been getting a message from a, a business here I think they sell furniture furniture or something Pika and I don't even know how they got my number and I'm like Leave me alone. <laughs> I don't have money to buy a chair, which I desperately need my dad literally went to my brother's room and took this chair, like he borrowed it from him because it's the only other chair that we have, like that we can move around the house. Um, and I have this chair that I've had since I've been living here. Um, and the only thing that makes this chair comfortable uh, is this, this pillow on it that I feel is getting flatter from how much time I've just been sitting in it because of my injury. Um, but yeah. It's just, it is what it is. Um, oh, sorry, the mic just flipped. And I, I don't like those messages or calls because it feels like they're trying to pressure, pressure you to buy something. And I'm like, no. Um, I, I remember one call I received because I was just tired of it. They called me and I was like, if this is Pika again, I'm going to block this number. And they were like, uh, have a good day. And they just hung up and I was like, okay. Like really, it's, uh, it, it's tiring. And the reason why I'm so frustrated with these, I talked about this before, is because before there was this scam. I don't even know if it's a scam, but I call it a scam, uh, this plot where they would call you, a random company would call you and they would ask you questions purposely trying to get you to say yes. If you for any reason said C, sí, or yes or okay, they would have a recording of that and they would sign you up for a business saying that you agreed to it. Not a business, not a business, like some kind of insurance, some kind of uh, thing. And I remember once we got this bill like in our, like you, you could check your, your monthly, uh, what you, your record in your bank. And we got this bill like for 14 or $15 they're like, what is this from? And we go to the bank and they're like, it's insurance that you, you're, you asked for. I'm like, you didn't ask for this. And the worst part is to cancel it is the most complicated thing ever. I'm like, Argh! it, it was frustrating. I, I, because I don't, I didn't even have money. Like, like I was earning like very little from my workplace and like I deposited in the bank. Like this is the safe place. And when I started getting that, I was like, I can't trust the bank now because the bank is sending my information to these companies and like, I never gave them permission for that. So that's why sometimes I, I would rather have my money, like physical money, so that way like the bank can't touch it. But right now I can't trust having the money here because it's worrisome. Worrisome what could happen, worrisome what could be done, honestly. Um, BP, what's up? Can you block delete? Yes, there's a way to block. Let me show you just an example. I'm going to go into the chat with uh, my friend Daniel. If I remember correctly, the option should be somewhere here. Um, yeah, so see in the, in the chat on the bottom, you can block the contact or you can block the person, you can report. Um, so you do have options to like block these things and with, uh, with the phone itself, you can actually block, uh, certain things. So, you know, 
it really depends on how you want to do it, but there's a lot of ways to block things. And by the way, Magnus, thank you very much for becoming a member. I appreciate your support. Um, now you've joined the family. <laughs> Join the ace club. I don't know, we should like call each other aces. I want like, I can't do this on the computer, but on the phone, you can send the ace emote. Um, I think you can send the, uh, also send one of my, um, one of my reactions, one of my, uh, Hold up, let me see uh, this, these two, ha huh? I can do that. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me go back uh, to the other messages. Um, yeah, they just text from another number. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many of them you block, they just keep bothering you. Uh, NZ, how can we get physical resources to you? Is there something like a PO box or Amazon wish list that will make it to you in Ecuador? Okay, this is a difficult question to answer. I'm going to set up a PO box in the United States um, because I hear that you can do that for free. I talked about this in my previous video about um, can I find work in Ecuador? And there's a, you can set up a P.O. box in the States for free. The only complication, complication, is from the P.O. box getting the item sent over here. It's not, I don't think it's expensive, but depending on the weight of the item, some of them can't be sent. And it depends on what the item is. For example, if you send me, just as an example, you send me a water bottle. I got this for free. <laughs> but if you send me a water bottle, then they're not gonna charge you a lot because it's very light um, and it's cheap. Like, let's just assume this bottle cost $5, which it probably didn't, but $5. Uh, and you send this to the PO box and, you, and I gotta get it sent over here, they would probably charge me somewhere from around five to $10 to get it sent from that PO box over here for it to arrive here in Ecuador. But if I were to order this microphone, which costs $200, I think. Um, or just imagine it were to cost anywhere in the realm of that, because Don Shader gave me this, which once again, brother, if you ever see this, I appreciate it. Then they would charge you more because the item itself costs more. And sometimes it's also, like I said, the weight. Like just assume you are asking for something like like, I don't know, a cube of metal, which I don't know why someone would send that, but a cube of metal, and it weighs too much, then there would be an extra price for that, for sending that item over. For technology, like imagine a cell phone. If the price exceeds $300, there's a, there's a, there's an, there's a fee for that, an import fee. So I can, I can set up a P.O. box in the States, but depending on the item you want to send, it might cost more. Sometimes it's easier to just have a person bring it for you. Like if you tell me you want to bring something, if I know someone who's going to the States, we can have it sent to their P.O. box and they'll bring it over. Um, and it's still going to cost something. Like if I have family or a friend, maybe they'll bring it for, for nothing, but it generally costs something. So I appreciate if uh, you wanted to send something over. Um, I, I, would, I would love that because I like displaying the things that people send me. I actually have the, uh, I still have the cup, the bowl that Lisa gave me, and it's over there. Um, I don't have it here because I'm not drinking anything except for this bottle of water. Um, and I, my mom told me not to drink from it anyway. I was like, okay. Um, but I, I, like, uh, I, I like having these things and showing like, appreciation for the fact that you guys gave me something because it's not every day that someone wants to help you like that. Um, but if, it's some, if you want to help, like, uh, just let me know. Either way, you can send me an email and we can talk about that. Uh, Kenneth, was it Banco Pichincha? For me, it was uh, Banco Bolivariano. I had that complication and I was really mad about it. And yeah, Banco Guayaquil is good. Uh, I, have a, I have an account in Banco Guayaquil, but only to receive the payments from my workplace um, and from YouTube. And even then, it charges you a lot of money for an international transfer, 
which is pain in the butt. Um, let's see here. I block every call <laughs> I get from numbers I don't recognize. It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> I know, it's not me. Hello. Um, they are annoying. The spam emails are terrible. The scam emails are terrible. And yes, you use WhatsApp a lot here in Ecuador. Daniel, sometimes the postage to ship to Ecuador combined with EVA tax, those two alone would be almost double the price of the item. That's why I always say I don't like ordering anything from outside. There's a lot more simplifications for the process now. And you can order from Amazon. We talked about this with Don, but it's still like there's complications. There's things you can't send. Um, you don't know if it's going to arrive. You don't know if it arrives, if it's going to, if someone's going to take it. No one can leave an item outside your door because they have to leave it outside the door that's outside your door. So if you leave something like, for example, we have this like big door, like puerton, and if you leave something there, like a garage door, imagine, you leave something there, no one can see it, but everyone on the outside, it's connected to a normal street and a normal sidewalk. So people walk by and if someone sees a box there with something they consider might be valuable, they're going to take it. It's, it's just, there's no way. Um, Magnus, uh, I used to watch Our Life Unknown. They lived in Olon. All of a sudden they just disappeared. Stop posting and answering. Do you know? No, I do not know what happened to them. Which is weird because Olon gives me really good vibes. I haven't been in Olon, but everyone and everything I've seen about Olon is amazing. I want to go to Olon. Um, you can make an account with Servi Entrega. They have an address in Miami. So yeah, Servi Entrega does something similar to this other service that I recommended. Not recommended, but that I talked about in my last video, which is called Larbox. So yeah, they charge a certain amount for the things that you get sent. Um, although $8 per pound sounds like it could get very heavy uh, in price after you start um, ordering bigger things. Um, Lisa, isn't VAT added on top of the shipping charges? I seem to recall Don Shader mentioning some issues he had with getting an instant pot. I think so. Um, there's a, there's, I just know that there's taxes added on to everything that's not from here in Ecuador. That's why I just avoid buying things from outside the country unless I know someone that I know is going to bring it. And even if I have to pay a person to bring it for me, like my friend who has the service, I prefer him to bring it because I trust him to bring it and for it not to get lost in customs. The only problem is that if something happens with a delivery, like a friend or someone bringing something, there's no insurance. So if, if my friend were to bring me, for example, let's just say he were to bring me a microphone that I need and it gets, for some reason, it gets damaged, stuck in customs, something happens he can't do anything about it. And I have to accept that he can't do anything about it. But if you send it through Larbox or through Servi Entrega and something happens to it, they're responsible for giving you your money back. They can't get you the item, of course, because you have to reorder it if you want. But at least there's a guarantee. Uh, GMA said PO Box is $65 for six months in the US. I don't know, this service that is over here, Larbox offers, from what I saw, a free P.O. box. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to paste the website just so that you know what I'm talking about. Larbox. Um, and you can check it out, although it's in Spanish. Um, it, it, it says there, Casiero Gratis. So free P.O. box, which is so weird um, because, you're, because you're telling me it costs $65, which, ooh -hoo. $65, even in six months. For me, those $65 can go a very long way um, in food. So yeah, that's the situation. Um, does anyone else have any other questions uh, or anything else you would like to talk about? We can still stay on stream for a few more minutes um, because 
it's almost going to be 5, so stopping it now or stopping it at 5 would be almost the same thing. Um, Servi Entrega offers a free box as well. Yeah, it's so weird um, because BPE is telling me it's $65, and that's, well, every six months, but still. Maybe it's because of the difference, or maybe Larbox takes on that fee because they're getting money for the people who are doing the service. Hard to say. I, I wouldn't know. Maybe they have some kind of like link. Um, maybe they like they have like a, a kind of connection where they have like they get these free boxes. Ah, it's just a space in their warehouse. Okay, that makes sense. So they just probably rent out a big warehouse and just have everything sent there. All right, that that's that makes more sense. Um, so yeah. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any other questions. What could I tell you about something that recently happened? Uh, it's been kind of uh, it's been kind of frustrating going to to work with this this injury that I have. Just a little side conversation, um, because now whenever I like use my crutches, I have to like grab whatever I have over here in order to to be able to like move around. So it's kind of like eh. Uh, Rick, Ro Rick Joyce, hello, buenas, uh, good to see a comment from you. Um, are there any MoneyGram locations in Puerto Viejo? Not that I know of. The only, if that's a, if I, if I remember correctly, that's a money sending service. The only money sending service that I know here is Western Union. And everyone here prefers to use Western Union when it comes to sending money because the fees are a little bit lower there. Not not exempt from fees, but they're lower, which is, which is good in comparison to having to worry about big fees. Um, like when you would draw money directly from a bank or something like that. So Western Union is what exists here. Money ran through Banco Bolivariano. Can you? Interesting, because Banco Bolivariano has never told me this. Then again, I've never used MoneyGram myself. I actually think MoneyGram is better than Western Union. Really? This is news to me. <laughs> I'm going to, as soon as I can, I'm probably going to go um, and check that out. MoneyGram, you can send via an app directly to an Ecuador bank account. It's like 18 bucks for two. Wow. Um... Jules, hello. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Hello to you in Wyoming. Um, I need to investigate MoneyGram because it might be an actual good solution for the situation I'm having now. Because whenever it's an international transfer, I, get, I have to go through a bank. And the bank that I have to go through is Banco Guayaquil. And it charges a lot. Western is trash. Shake, shaking my head, charges 50 bucks for $2,000. Eee. In comparison to only 18, definitely overcharging. I'm gonna look into that though. Uh, MoneyGram. Let's see here. MoneyGram. Look into. Okay, good. Uh, Christopher, I know Don is against moving to Vilcabamba. Your thoughts on expatting there? I had a recent, um, I, I heard recently, I can't remember from where, that Vilcabamba has a, like, it's really good because of um, something. I don't remember what it was, but there's a really good element to Vilcabamba that makes it a good place to retire to. It's just, the natives living in Vilcabamba have um, apparently some kind of traditional situation where they don't want people coming there. Um, loving living abroad, appreciate it. Yeah, let me know when we can take a when we can sit down. Uh, hit me up um, so we can talk about that. Uh, would love to see if we can make a, maybe a video. Um, I'm not sure what the situation is with Vilcabamba. Like, it's not a bad place to live in, of course, in the sense that, like, like any Ecuadorian country, it's, it's pretty, it's beautiful. Um, and it has its advantages economically. 
but I don't remember what it was that they have that's like extra good. I, I, uh, it's like on the tip of my tongue, but um, uh, I just know it's uh, it, it has these complications like what happened with uh, some expats there. I think it just depends on where you go and how you present yourself there. Um, let's see here. Kenneth, I sent Western Union. Fee was $8 to Ecuador. That's good. Um, it really varies with your method of receipt. Maybe they're becoming more competitive. MoneyGram is king. I'm going to investigate that. I'm getting into freedom. Um, hello, just joined live and not sure what's been discussed. Do you suggest any location other than Cuenca that may be safe for a young family and access to school with youngest at four years old? Um, uh, before I answer that question, I'm getting into freedom. Uh, let me answer what Cynthia Reese said. Uh, yeah, also, no. That's one of the things that I don't like about certain parts of Ecuador. There's just not a lot to do. And it depends on who you are. Maybe that's fine for you. Um, I remember even Mark had told me that in certain part that he was in, all that the expats would do is just sit down and play cards. Um, if you go to Manta, you have bowling alley, a bowling alley, and Mundo de Nieve, ice world, where you have snow. Um, and there are certain places that have more nature. Um, if you want more things to do, you definitely want to hit a bigger city. If you like nature, then go to the cities that are more like on the outskirts. Um, but anyways, going into I'm getting into freedom. Cuenca seems to be the best place just because it's both safe. There's a large amount of people who speak the language that you might be coming with, in this case, English. Um, and I guess it's like the, 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 the not overly touristic it is touristic just because a lot of people know about it but it's not like baños where it's like the main attractions for baños are touristic things um and like well outdoor activities uh if you look if you're looking for a place with schools i would recommend quito and the and the only thing i have against quito at this moment is that it's become a little bit more dangerous I guess it's relative. Like I say a little bit because I'm not there, but people there will tell you it's definitely much more dangerous than it was before. And I was there not too long ago and it felt safe to me. But um, the reason why I recommend Quito is just because it feels like there's a better environment for learning because there's more options of good schools in Quito. I talked to my cousin when I was over there and she even told me there's schools that focus on languages even. Like if you want a school that's like mainly English, you can go to a school that's mainly English. There's a school that's mainly German, you can go there. One that's French, you can go there. They're like the, the pillars of schools over there in, in Quito. And you don't have that in other cities. Like here, there's a really good school in Puerto Viejo. Good in the sense that it looks really appealing from the outside. And it's generally a lot safer looking. It's one of those, like, I guess you could say preppy schools. So it really depends, like, because you can, you can send your child there, or you can send them to a public school here. And if, you're, if your child is really good and like they're going to focus on studying, then they could have a really good time. I know a lot of public, public school students who are like top of the notch, top class, really good students, but because they they struggle to be that. But you can go to a school that's a lot higher class and have better opportunities because you're there in the sense that you'll probably be, find better teachers because as a teacher, uh, and I know the situation of other teachers, good teachers go to teach where they're being offered more. And a school in Quito is where you're being offered the best pay for your time. So that's where you're gonna find the best teachers. Just my opinion. Um, that's not to say if you want to have a teacher like me, I'm here in, in Puerto Viejo, so you know. Uh, let's see here. Kenneth, it might depend on the amount of money. Um, sent, maybe. 
Um, one of the coolest things I love, I think Vilcabamba has to offer is an archery place. I love archery. I like the idea of archery. I wish I could practice with a bow and arrow. Um, I just never tried it. Uh, BP Ace for getting into freedom. Flynn's on the fly just mentioned they have noticed a lot of young families in Vilcabamba. Uh, that would be good to look into just in case. Um, but wouldn't be able to say from my personal perspective. Um, so yeah, it's about to be five. Um, literally, this live stream, we've had it for three hours, and I appreciate everyone who spent some time to be here. Um, everyone who's left a comment, everyone who's interacted. I apologize if I didn't get to get to everyone's comments. It's not that I didn't want to. Um, I just, when we started talking about our situation, there were a few that I think I passed over. Um, I didn't get to say. Um, if I want to stretch to my, my USD moving to a country whose currency is the USD. Uh, going to a country whose currency. Uh, Christopher, the only thing I would say is uh, your USD is stretched better over here because over here, everything is cheaper. Everything is just amazingly cheap, like super, super, super cheap in comparison to what you're used to in the States. With my dad, we talked about how things are getting more expensive for us, but that's because we're living on an Ecuadorian salary. If you come to Ecuador and just assume your salary, like what you're coming in with, like your monthly earning or your monthly amount that you can spend is $2,000 and above, you're gonna have a great time here in Ecuador because it's just easier to live with those $2,000, especially if you're living with those $2,000 in a place that's not exaggeratedly expensive. Because you can live here with a thousand dollars, I think, as long as you know which city you're gonna live in and you don't overspend. Of course, the economy is gonna keep at the rate it's going getting worse, but it don't, I don't think it's gonna get to the level where if you're earning 2,000 per month, you're gonna feel pressured. Unless you decided to rent a place that costs $1,000 to rent, then you're, you're a little bit excessive there, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, once again, I appreciate everyone who's here. Um, do you or anyone know ever accepting paying jobs to fly into an airport in the States to help transport extra suitcases? Um, I don't, I wouldn't say I know exactly, um, and I can't say right now, I'll range transportation from the airport and transportation help in Ecuador. Like if you arrive at the airport, you mean someone to take you from there to somewhere else? There are people who do that. Um, you just have to talk to them. Darwin Paredes would be able to help you in the Quito area, I think. I have family members in Guayaquil who drive taxis and they can help you if you arrive in Guayaquil and you need someone to safely take you from point A to point B. Um, so yeah. Um, I saw a video from Yapa Tree. A couple is paying $1,003, $300 per month unfurnished. Once again, you choose your lifestyle. If you're living in a place that charges you that much, honestly, you're, I think you're overpaying and you can find something decent and nice in a place that is much cheaper. Um, Magnus, how come it's so difficult to send money from bank accounts in Europe to Ecuador? Maybe it's the conversion. Maybe there's not a good method to sending it. Um, I wouldn't really be able to 100% say. Uh, I just feel like it would be those reasons. Um, let's see here. Is there any Ecuadorian equal to Stripe? What companies use for using Visa, MasterCard when paying on Ecuador websites? Um, Stripe don't work. Um, with what we use uh, in general, is um, like, like your debit cards here can be used for international purchases. It's just there is a slight fee in some places whenever you use it internationally. Credit cards here have a Visa, MasterCard abilities to be able to pay for stuff. So if you have a Visa or a MasterCard, you could use it over here. Um, you don't necessarily need a Stripe um, or an account like that. Um, from what I know, at least from what I've seen, even my brother, he's previously made purchases for things that he's needed uh, using his credit card because he actually has one, even though I told him not to get one. And he can use it and get like um, things from other countries with the credit card. Um, 
Where in Ecuador is it okay to flush toilet paper? Um, I can't remember where. I know there's a place that said that you can, but I just wouldn't, would recommend not doing it anywhere. <laughs> um, because I, it's really embarrassing having a toilet clogged. Trust me. Um, Daniel, I know I will live comfortably on 1,400. Probably will. Honestly, there's, there's a lot of uh, possibilities for living comfortably here with uh, what, that much, um, in my opinion. I could personally say that if I were somehow making $1,000 per month, I'd be set. I keep telling myself that because I know that's the reality. Like if I start splurging, then I would be like, no, that's not enough. But I know 1,000 is like the base amount that I'd be like, I don't even need the stress. Um, something that generally annoys me about Ecuador Bank is charging 40 cents for interbank. Yeah, that's so dumb. Um, and paying to get a paper receipt. The th I, in Banco Guayaquil, I like that they can, you can just not ask for the receipt. And I prefer to do that because I don't want to be charged 40 cents for that receipt. Or whatever they charge for it. Um, but yeah, 1300 a month for unfurnished just seems like too much. I wouldn't do that. Um, I'd be good with a place that costs 200 to $300 per month. Um, and then whatever is left over to pay for food, to pay for transportation. Um, and I think I'd still somehow be left over with like at least a hundred, two hundred dollars if I were to live comfortably, um, not going over, over my limits, trying to buy luxuries. Um, desde Canada, gracias por toda la información. Appreciate you. Uh, de nada. You're welcome. Uh, Kenneth, you can get, like in Guayaquil, you don't get charged if you, if you put the option to not get the receipt. Of course, if you ask for the receipt, they charge you for it, I think. Yeah, they charge you something, because I remember it asked you, do you want to be charged an extra point, something, and I just always say no, so I just ignore it. Um, Richard, does general aviation exist in Ecuador? Private pilots and such? I can't tell you that because I don't know. I assume it does. It's just not a common thing here because people just prefer to travel by bus because it's cheaper. Um, JPNY, that was for a very large penthouse apartment. Oh, penthouse just screams expensive. So yeah, that's not for me. Um, I feel like I wouldn't be able to maintain the maintenance for a place that big. I have a hard time with this small room. Um, is it possible to use the computer for the majority of banking and transactions with companies? I'm used to online banking and have mostly everything delivered. Uh, nowadays, most of the banks, they work through apps. Like if you have the app for X or Y uh, bank, you can even pay your services through the bank. Um, you're in a penthouse or no one lives above you. I'm not sure if you mean like if you're in a penthouse since you're in the highest floor, no one lives above you. Um, I just know I wouldn't be able to manage it. <laughs> um, I'm happy with this, this small room here. <laughs> ah, okay, joke. Uh, NZ, do you have safety trips? Uh, do you have safety tips traveling by bus between cities? Um, depends on what kind of safety we're talking about. Um, if you're worried about someone stealing your things, uh, robbing you uh, in the bus, once that happens, like there's nothing that you can do that will, will save you there. Just, just to not scare anyone, but if it does happen whenever someone, you know, you're in a bus traveling from one city to another, if one of the people in that bus is a criminal and decides to rob the bus, then nothing is going to save you there. Um, just give them whatever you have so that way you can, you can save your life. Uh, in terms of, in general, like uh, getting a bus, I always recommend you go to the bus station if you're getting a bus from city to city uh, and make sure you get the bus that doesn't stop on its trip. Because there's two types of buses. There's one bus that while it's going from one city to another, it'll make stops in order to pick people up. You don't want that bus. Get the bus that just takes you from one city to the other. Because when there's a bus that makes stops, that bus has a chance to pick up people that you don't want on that bus. And it's gonna take much longer for you to get to the city. 
So that's my main safety tip. Um, if you want to avoid your, anything happening to your stuff, whatever you can carry on hand, you know, carry it with you, have it like close to you, like your tech, your valuables, like make sure you have them with you. If you're going to put something under the bus, just make sure it's like clothing or something that you're probably not so worried about anything happening to. Those are like my tiny recommendations when it comes to safety trips for bus travel. Um, because I don't really feel like, like a bus is only dangerous, like I said, if something happens with the person trying to loot the bus and it's just a person who is a criminal and then everyone is doomed. Um, but other than that, nothing. I, I remembered something that happened recently in Esmeraldas. No one's traveling to bus by Esmeraldas, so they're not even sending routes over there. And I heard that it got burnt. There was a bus that got burned over there. So no one even wants to send a bus to Esmeraldas. Just a side note for anyone thinking about Esmeraldas. Um, all right, thanks for the feedback, Louis. Yeah, but either way, if you ever get that option, don't ever take it. Always take the bus that takes you from the city with no stops. Uh, Richard, how hard is it to import electronics? For example, I need small components from X company. Cost is, say, $200. What would be the taxes and or hassle to do something like that? It depends on, on the weight of the electronic. Um, because if it's only $200 in price range, it's fine. But if it's a heavy item, then they're going to charge you extra for that. Think about um, what they said earlier. Per pound can be like $8. So if your item weighs 10 pounds, that's um, $80, just suppose. So you're paying $200 for the item and the $80 for, for transporting it. And then I don't remember if there's a separate fee for the, for the importing of the item. So, you know, keep those things in mind. If you want to get an idea, go to Amazon, set it to Ecuador. See what items can be sent and see how much it would charge you for the cart at the end of the purchase and see how much that costs in general. You can do that for various items on Amazon to get an idea. Um, Daniel, I heard on Amelia and JP, if I remember correctly, that Esmeraldas is more dangerous for violent crime. Right now it is. Right now it seems to be much worse. Either way, since Guayaquil is the biggest city, well, relatively one of the biggest cities, they talk about it more. Uh, Richard will be there next year and would like to start a small engineering company, just figuring out the details. Amazon example, yeah, try it out. Give it a shot just to give you an idea um, because that's what you want first. Get ideas and then start. you can start going into more specifics because for something like that, I'd need to investigate it myself to be 100% sure. So definitely try the Amazon method. All right, guys, so now I will definitely, um, let me see, Ace, your friend Don has shipped a lot, a lot of ways. Um, maybe time for another video by him. You could give him questions. Your site here could help. Uh, yeah, we definitely need to, uh, with Don, we have some videos that we have to make, just I need to get well with my foot first, and then we can start making the videos. So guys, once again, uh, thank you very much for being here today. Um, I'll probably... Questions end now, um, so this is just the bye-bye section of the video. Uh, I appreciate you for being here. We've been here a very, 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 very long time. Um, I know someone is going to leave me a comment when this video, when I post it on the channel, because it posts itself once it's finished. But um, someone's going to say, oh no, it was too long. And it's not that I wanted to make it long, it's just we had a lot to talk about. Um, I appreciate everyone who helped us out. Um, who donated to the channel. Um, it's not even for the channel, it's for, for this. I appreciate you, um, your donation because it's going to help us in these hard times. Um, I appreciate it. Um, take care to everyone. Uh, have an excellent rest of your day. Mark Horning, BP, was asking for you. Say hello to BP and tell her you're okay. Um, and thank you for, for being here. I hope you can check out this stream because Unfortunately, this is a high and bye. Hola y chao, Mark, because uh, we're leaving for now. So everyone, take care. Have an excellent rest of your day. Once again, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, if you want to become a member, please. If you have not liked this video, please leave a like. 
comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. Um, uh, just, I appreciate all the help that you give. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Please expect more help in the future. Um, in terms of if you need answers to questions, I will do my best to help you. Because um, that's all I can do. Uh, have an excellent rest of your day. And as always, ace out. I'm going to check that comment out right now, Magnum. Ah, no. No more.